for a never-before-seen virus, researchers first sequence its genetic material, or genome, and identify regions that are unique to that specific virus. PCR then targets these particular segments. A PCR test begins by collecting a sample. This can be blood for hepatitis viruses, feces for poliovirus, and samples from the nose or throat for coronaviruses. The sample is taken to a central laboratory where PCR is performed to test for the presence of the virus's genome. Genetic information can be encoded via DNA or RNA. HPV, for example, uses DNA, while SARS-CoV-2, the cause of COVID-19, uses RNA. Before running the PCR, the viral RNA, if present, must be reverse transcribed to make a strand of complementary DNA. Researchers then run the PCR. If the virus is present in the sample, its unique regions of genetic code will be identified by complementary primers and copied by enzymes. One strand of DNA becomes hundreds of millions, which are detected using probes marked with fluorescent dye. If the PCR machine senses fluorescence, the sample has tested positive for the virus, meaning the individual is infected. Amino assays, on the other hand, tap into the immune system's memory of the virus, showing if someone has previously been infected. They work by targeting virus-specific antibodies generated by the immune system during infection. These are specialized classes of proteins that identify and fight foreign substances, like viruses. Immunoassays may detect IgG antibodies, the most abundant class, and IgM antibodies, the type that's first produced in response to a new infection. The presence of IgM antibodies suggests a recent infection, but since it can take the body over a week to produce a detectable amount, they're unreliable in diagnosing current infections. Meanwhile, IgG antibodies circulate for an extended period after infection. Their presence usually indicates that someone was exposed and recovered. Before the immunoassay, health professionals draw blood from an individual. This sample then comes into contact with a portion of the virus of interest. If the body has, in fact, been exposed to the virus in the past, the body's virus-specific antibodies will bind to it during the test. This reaction produces a change in color, indicating that the sample tested positive and that the individual has been exposed to the virus. Immunoassays are especially important when it comes to retroactively diagnosing people who were infected but went untested. And there's exciting potential for those who have developed immunity to a virus. In some cases, their blood plasma could be used as treatment in people who are currently fighting it. PCR and immunoassays are always in the process of becoming more accurate and efficient. For example, innovations in PCR have led to the use of self-contained testing devices that relay results within one hour. Digital PCR, which quantifies individual pieces of target DNA, shows promise in further boosting accuracy. And although immunoassays are difficult to develop quickly, researchers in Singapore were able to create one for SARS-CoV-2, even before COVID-19 was declared a pandemic. These tests, along with the scientists who developed them and the health professionals who administer them, are absolutely essential. And when deployed early, they can save millions of lives. We know that our bodies produce virus-specific antibodies, but how? Learn more about your body's defenses with this video. Or find out how a very different medical test works with this one. A new virus emerges and spreads like wildfire. In order to contain it, researchers must first collect data about who's been infected. Two main viral testing techniques are critical. One tells you if you have the virus, and the other shows if you've already had it. So how exactly do these tests work? PCR, or polymerase chain reaction testing, targets the virus's genetic material in the body and is used to diagnose someone who is currently infected. Yet, this genetic material may be present in such imperceptible amounts that actually detecting it is difficult. This is where PCR comes in. It's widely used to amplify genetic information to large enough quantities that it can be readily observed. 
To develop a PCR test for a never-before-seen virus, researchers first sequence its genetic material, or genome, and identify regions that are unique to that specific virus. PCR then targets these particular segments. A PCR test begins by collecting a sample. This can be blood for hepatitis viruses, feces for poliovirus, and samples from the nose or throat for coronaviruses. The sample is taken to a central laboratory where PCR is performed to test for the presence of the virus's genome. Genetic information can be encoded via DNA or RNA. HPV, for example, uses DNA, while SARS-CoV-2, the cause of COVID-19, uses RNA. Before running the PCR, the viral RNA, if present, must be reverse transcribed to make a strand of complementary DNA. Researchers then run the PCR. If the virus is present in the sample, its unique regions of genetic code will be identified by complementary primers and copied by enzymes. One strand of DNA becomes hundreds of millions, which are detected using probes marked with fluorescent dye. If the PCR machine senses fluorescence, the sample has tested positive for the virus, meaning the individual is infected. Amino assays, on the other hand, tap into the immune system's memory of the virus, showing if someone has previously been infected. They work by targeting virus-specific antibodies generated by the immune system during infection. These are specialized classes of proteins that identify and fight foreign substances, like viruses. Immunoassays may detect IgG antibodies, the most abundant class, and IgM antibodies, the type that's first produced in response to a new infection. The presence of IgM antibodies suggests a recent infection, but since it can take the body over a week to produce a detectable amount, they're unreliable in diagnosing current infections. Meanwhile, IgG antibodies circulate for an extended period after infection. Their presence usually indicates that someone was exposed and recovered. Before the immunoassay, health professionals draw blood from an individual. This sample then comes into contact with a portion of the virus of interest. If the body has, in fact, been exposed to the virus in the past, the body's virus-specific antibodies will bind to it during the test. This reaction produces a change in color, indicating that the sample tested positive and that the individual has been exposed to the virus. Immunoassays are especially important when it comes to retroactively diagnosing people who were infected but went untested. And there's exciting potential for those who have developed immunity to a virus. In some cases, their blood plasma could be used as treatment in people who are currently fighting it. PCR and immunoassays are always in the process of becoming more accurate and efficient. For example, innovations in PCR have led to the use of self-contained testing devices that relay results within one hour. Digital PCR, which quantifies individual pieces of target DNA, shows promise in further boosting accuracy. And although immunoassays are difficult to develop quickly, researchers in Singapore were able to create one for SARS-CoV-2, even before COVID-19 was declared a pandemic. These tests, along with the scientists who developed them and the health professionals who administer them, are absolutely essential. And when deployed early, they can save millions of lives. We know that our bodies produce virus-specific antibodies, but how? Learn more about your body's defences with this video. Or find out how a very different medical test works with this one. Okay, so good afternoon everyone. Welcome to our webinar on effective risk crisis communication in times of pandemic for local government units. Uh, I am Xavier Venasunshan from the UP Center for Local and Regional Governance or CLRG and I will be facilitating today's webinar. So um, later, if you encounter any issues with your speakers, here are a few troubleshooting options. Uh, ensure that your speakers are turned on. Uh, try increasing the volume on your device. If you're not yet using one, try using earphones. You can also restart your Zoom application or, or reboot your device. Uh, you can also try rein reinstalling Zoom. At any point during the webinar, you can also chat with uh, Ms. Lourdes Santos and Mr. Gerard Suarez, our webinar support team and my colleagues from UPCLRG. 
for technical support and other webinar concerns. You can find their names and email addresses on the bottom right corner of your screen. So if you're still experiencing issues with Zoom even after troubleshooting and getting help from our webinar support team, you can still tune in via our website or YouTube live streams. You may scan the QR codes or use the links on the screen to get to our live streams. Okay. So if you've decided to join us through our website live stream, please accomplish the attendance sheet. Um, but but uh, uh, um, fill them in, not all at once. Um, and uh, uh, accomplish them at the time indicated. For the YouTube live stream, please type your names and email addresses in the chat box so we'll know that you're there. After the webinar, we will be asking those of you who joined via our live streams to answer a set of questions about our discussions from the webinar so we can verify your attendance. This is only for those who want to receive an e-certificate. Okay, so now we can proceed to the program proper of our webinar. Again, welcome. Uh, this is uh, Effective Risk Crisis Communication in Times of Pandemic for Local Government Units. This webinar is brought to you by the Center for, Center for Local and Regional Governance, CLRG, of the National College of Public Administration and Governance. Let us first quickly go over our program this afternoon. So from 2 o'clock to 2.10, I will give a quick introduction of who we are and a summary profile of our webinar registrants. Our Dean Professor Dan Sagil will also be giving his opening remarks. From 2.10 to 2.15, I will be discussing our webinar protocols and open forum mechanics. From 2.15 to 3.40, we will have the discussions or lectures from our resource speakers and reactor. The open forum is from 3.40 to 4.50, then closing and a few final reminders from 4.50 to 5 o'clock. So again, we are from the Center for Local and Regional Governance. We are a constituent unit of the National College of Public Administration and Governance of the University of the Philippines. We are the university's research, training, and consulting center for local governments. Okay. So these are just uh, keywords on some of the topics we've researched on, such as sustainability, subnational design, interlocal cooperation, disaster risk management, among others. Our main focus in research is to generate um, knowledge products that can be used by public administration and local governance to students and practitioners. In fact, one of the reasons why this webinar was organized is to present the findings from our res research on risk crisis communication. We actually published our findings through policy briefs in our website and shared them as well in our Facebook page. So check that out if um, check that out after the webinar if you haven't. We collaborated with Dr. Raymond Flores from West Visayas State University for this research. And later in our discussions, he will be presenting our findings. Okay. So bridging research to practice, we also offer regular and customized training programs for executive officials, legislative officials, department heads, and staff. We also provide consultation services to local government, government units. For instance, we have assisted some of our local gov government units in the delivery of their programs, activities, and projects for our PWD brothers and sisters. Um, we've also helped some of our LGUs to better prepare and respond to natural calamities and hazards such as El Nino. Okay. So for this webinar, we had a total of uh, 295 registrants. As of now, um, we only have around uh, 150. So hopefully later, uh, other registrants who are not here could uh, join us. Majority of our registrants are female, 42% are male, and one preferred not to indicate his or her sex. Um, most or 84% of our registrants are from Luzon, representing 27 different provinces, including the National Capital Region. Uh, 18 registrants from eight different provinces are from Visayas and 27 registrants from 11 different provinces are from Mindanao. Actually, we also have one registrant from India, Mr. Guru Saravanan, chairperson of the Institute of Grassroots Governance. Hi, Guru. I'm not sure if you're here already, but 
If you're here, uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Perhaps in the open, open forum, you may also want to share some of the risk crisis communication practices from your country. So most of our registrants are from city municipal LGUs, provincial LGUs, national government agencies and offices, such as the LGDBM, CHED, DEPED, DOST, etc. We also have registrants from the academe, various NGOs, and barangay LGUs. We actually also have a few registrants from the House of Representatives, Senate, media companies, health centers, and professional association. Okay, so that's it for the introduction. Now I would like to ask our Dean, Professor Dan Sagil, to give his opening remarks. Um, hi, Dean. Hi, thank you, Maki. Good, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to this uh, webinar on effective risk crisis communication in times of pandemic for local government units. I would like to start by wishing you and your families my best for your health and safety. I would also like to express my gratitude to the director and staff of the Center for Local and Regional Governance of the National College of Public Administration and Governance for hosting and facilitating this event. Thank you also to our great speakers for being here to share their knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, experiences, and practices. COVID-19 is a human tragedy, and our, and our hearts go out to all, the, to all those who have lost loved ones and to those putting themselves at risk to save others. It is important that we learn as many lessons as we can. COVID-19 has put a spotlight on how leaders communicate with their constituents, partners, clients, and communities during these unprecedented times. From reporting the latest updates on national television to issuing statements on social media, we are seeing leaders adapt their communication strategies to emerging situations. When crisis hit, people expect leaders to rise to the occasion. Even if we cannot fix people's problems overnight, we can make them feel heard. It is for this reason that we must be aware of the key ingredients in our crisis communication strategy. Whether we are sharing difficult news, simply answering calls from unhappy clients, or hosting a last minute press conference. The information we shared will enable our public to make informed decisions with respect to protecting themselves or their communities from COVID-19, as well as facilitate civic engagement and collective action toward mitigating the current crisis and preventing future risks. As leaders, we usually do not wait to have perfect information or a detailed plan, just acknowledging the gravity of what is happening and empathizing with people impact goes a long way. Anticipate the questions you may get from your constituents. Address those concerns in uh, FAQ documents that you can update and direct people as the situation develops. Being proactive can minimize stress. Remember, when tension is high, the risk of appearing insensitive in our communication is also high. Put yourself in someone else's shoes first. Is your tone relatable? Is the message inclusive of people of all backgrounds, economic statuses, and location? Would it be taken out of context easily? These are some of the questions we should be able to answer when we communicate. We should also instill confidence when we communicate. It is not good that commu the communicator is also panicking. We take our cues from people of authority when things are tough, so part of our job as a leader is the energy we bring to a situation. This is how we should fight the war against COVID-19. We must be swift, focused, and supportive of each other. We hope that this webinar will be an effective exercise for sharing information to support and promote the efforts of local government units in generating and transmitting information and sharing of experiences for accelerated local development. Specifically, we hope that this webinar raises our capabilities as government officials and officers. Like always, 
the SELRG, and the other units of the college are more than willing to help you. I sincerely hope that the lessons learned in this webinar will assist all of us in our policies and programs as we move forward. Before concluding, allow me to thank all of you for your interest in this webinar and in improving your capabilities. I trust that you would find this exercise to be a rewarding experience. Maraming salamat at magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat. Uh, um, hopefully, mga uh, points and questions uh, raised by Dean's opening remarks will be covered later in our discussions. So um, before we proceed, let us, uh, I will just discuss a few webinar protocols. So to avoid unnecessary background noises, you're all on mute. Um, we will ask you at some points, some points during the webinar to turn your cameras on. And for documentation purpose, purposes, this webinar is being recorded. And finally, to get the most out of our discussions, please focus on the webinar. So um, now I will explain the mechanics for our open forum later. So uh, the Zoom's raise hand feature and chat box will be used to collect questions and comments. You can raise your hand or type your questions anytime throughout the webinar, but you or your questions and comments will be entertained only during the open forum. We'll be accommoda accommodating questions and comments alternately between those who raise their hands and the questions and comments in the chat box. For those who will be raising their hands, wait for us to unmute you, then you yourselves can ask your questions or share your thoughts. Before your questions or, co or comments, please state or include your full name, LGO or organization, and to whom your question or comment is directed to. And due to limited time, we won't be able to accommodate all of your questions and comments, but we will forward them to our resource speakers so they can respond to you via email after the webinar. Okay, so just a quick overview of what will be discussed. So our first discussion, as I've mentioned, will be the presentation of findings from our research on risk crisis communication. Second discussion will be on the use of ICTs for disaster management. Uh, followed by how to effectively communicate with communities, communities amidst a crisis. After these three discussions, our reactor will give his insights on what was discussed. Please note that while the discussions will focus on the current pandemic, they are also applicable to other types of disasters and crises. Uh, the COVID-19 virus is a biological hazard and the COVID-19 pandemic is a biological disaster, which is why our resource speakers for today are DRR scholars and experts. So... So before we proceed to our first discussion, um, picture taking muna po tayo. So please turn your cameras on. Uh, maybe a minute or two would suffice. Okay, maraming salamat po. Okay, so for our first speaker, Dr. Raymond Flores, he holds a doctorate degree in public administration from the National College of Public Administration and Governance, University of the Philippines. He is, he is an assistant professor of politics and public administration and governance at West Visayas State University. Uh, his research interests are disaster risk management, cross-sector collaboration, state civil society relations, and political economy and strategic relations. He also currently works as a local partner or documenter of the Iloilo province on the implementation of forecast-based financing, early actions, and funding mechanisms for emergency preparedness, being carried out by the Development Academy of the Philippines under their Sustainable Human Development Program. So to present the findings from our baseline study on risk crisis communication for LGUs, here's Dr. Raymond Flores. Hi, sir. Is 
So, magandang hapon po sa lahat ng mga uh, participants natin uh, this afternoon. Uh, I'll be presenting the baseline study that uh, I conducted together with Xavier um, before the, um, the, the, the the duration is by the time that um, ECQ has been um, implemented in NCR. So, uh, we are about to present this study, uh, particularly on how uh, LGUs had been uh, functioning, what are the activities of LGUs during the time that ECQ has uh, been implemented and how uh, people perceive um, coronavirus disease and uh, what are their um, take in the actions and activities of their respective LGUs generally uh, by getting information from their local authorities. So why we need risk and crisis communication? Generally because the public needs information. Uh, the public needs this particular this information in order for them to have an informed decisions with respect to how can they protect themselves in, in this case, in the context of COVID-19. Um, generally, um, when we talk about risk crisis communication, it is an interactive exchanges of information and opinions throughout the risk analysis process concerning the hazards and risk related factors, including risk perceptions, uh, um, risk assessors and risk managers that also include consumers, the industry, the academic community, including the explanation about the risk assessment findings and the basis of risk management decisions, specifically uh, in the part of the local government unit. Therefore, it is considered that um, risk or crisis communication is an important aspect in managing and responding the harmful and negative consequences of COVID-19 pandemic. So according to the World Health Organization, in developing a risk or crisis communication, uh, that particular risk or crisis communication plan or strategy, in, in this case, the context of COVID-19, the initial step involves an assessment of the public's risk perception to the disease. It is believed that the success of public health intervention uh, programs are usually dependent on the public's risk perception as what we have experienced during uh, the 2009 swine flu outbreak. It is therefore considered as a determinant factor for an individual collective, uh, for an individual to perform collective actions in order for, for them to protect uh, the, the, themselves and of course uh, act and then follow actions particularly in protecting themselves. So information about people's perception can serve as basis for local government units for them to come up with risk or crisis communication messages and also for them to address miscommunication, negative and potential detrimental perceptions related to the current crisis that we are uh, facing. So what are uh, the, the what, what, what are the things that, that may, we may say that it's part of the risk or crisis communication? So one, May, may problema yata sa, ano, sa slide. Okay. Di nagkiklik. Di nagkiklik, no? <laughs> Wait lang. Uh, sige, sir. Pwedeng yung, ano, yung copy ko na lang ng slide nyo. Yung... Oh, sige, sige. Sure, okay. Ayun na. Okay, now. Okay. So, risk and crisis communication may include information about how they can protect themselves from the virus, what are the information that they need uh, for them to follow and to consider, how they can help in, in, in slowing down or preventing the, the transmission, particularly local transmission, um, what are the protocols being uh, implemented, and uh, what, what are the, the strategies, the responses of the local government units 
uh, that had been um, instituted in order for 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 the community to um, follow and also that includes information about the current situation uh, in in the respective community for example uh, the number of confirmed cases generally from the start of of the crisis we have that the terms such as persons under investigation or PUIs, persons under monitoring or PUMs. And then, of course, because this is a public health uh, issue and crisis, we need to be updated about the state of the healthcare capacity of our respective localities. And what are the possible restriction scenarios? The reason why uh, the UPRI or the UP uh, Resilience Institute is trying to show the models of the possible trans, uh, transmission scenarios in respective localities. So based on our um, rapid assessment for the LGU's risk for crisis communication, particularly in social media, uh, generally we have scraped the, the activities in social media, specifically Facebook, of, of the three highly urbanized cities in the Philippines. Uh, they are Quezon City, uh, Iloilo City, at the same time Davao City. So what we have observed during the rapid online assessment. First, uh, regular updates reports on local crisis responses and management of uh, the LGUs. About 60 to 70% of their activities or postings in their social media accounts, particularly in Facebook, had been uh, focusing on their efforts, their initiatives, and other activities to address the current uh, public health crisis. Other updates also include public issuances that, that, that includes guidelines, uh, protocols, um, executive orders yeah, in terms of uh, how they should implement uh, the enhanced community quarantine. And then also that includes monitoring of the local prices of the basic commodities. And at the same time, imposition of uh, uh, social distancing protocols, curfew hours, at the same time, Nikorban. So also, other activities in the social media accounts of the LGUs include um, promotion of self-protective uh, behaviors that uh, generally give more emphasis on uh, providing infographics, uh, video materials, on, on, on questions, uh, that can be answered at the, on, in questions of the public toward how the virus is spread, um, how, how, how the virus can be acquired, uh, what, what are the things that the public can be done in order to protect themselves or prevent the trans local transmission of the virus. Also, one of the many activities in the uh, social media account of the local government units is that the, 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 the instances where they are trying to encourage civic engagement. This is by, by calling out the private sector, the non-governmental organizations to help, um, for example, um, solicit for, for donations in order to, 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 to serve those communities who had been placed into uh, enhanced community quarantine. So um, trying to call out for support from NGOs, particularly also for, for trying to, to call for possible donors of, of health, uh, uh, for, for health workers, particularly the protective um, equipment for our frontliners. And of course, th this is one of the um, important information that the public would want to know, regular updates, regular reports on, on the uh, local scenario, local crisis scenario or situation. And then, um, since social media is an unregulated space, the local government units would always want to address misinformation, fake news, and other issues about the crisis in which this, if not addressed, it can cause panic uh, from, from among the members of their respective community. So now I would like to present the key takeaways from the survey that we conducted for, for the the local citizens. Uh, generally, this has been uh, carried on, um, I, I think, May to, to, to June of 2020, wherein we, we have tried to reach people uh, in terms of how would they perceive uh, 
coronavirus disease if how risky for for, for them uh, what are your perception about the risk the crisis communication that the government uh, is uh, their respective governments trying to 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 share to them so what are the ideas you got from the survey first uh, social media is the primary channel for receiving and seeking information generally because more of our uh, respondents to the survey are in the uh, belong to the younger generation generally um, for people or for for respondents uh, within the age of 40 and above they, they prefer other channels to to get information uh, particularly television then we, we, we have known that people would like to at least uh, receive information once or more uh, or, or more than once uh, daily. So uh, the, 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 the local government unit should try to look at this information so that they can maximize the potential of uh, providing and targeting uh, right audience and providing correct information to their respective members of the community. For the factors affecting perceived effectiveness for LGU's risk or crisis communication, of course, as what I have presented earlier, if there is frequent and timely communication, then the public would believe that the risk or perceive that the risk or crisis communication of the local government unit is effective. And one of the highly rated activities of the local government units in their research crisis communication is related to the financial updates or reports related to COVID-19 response. So th these are detailed uh, liquidations, presentations of the, of the finances incurred in, in, in carrying out activities of the local government units in their response to uh, this public health crisis. Of course, see, the, the, the reason why um, we, we, we would like to to evaluate social media accounts of the local government units it's because uh, there's a presence of interactive communication because people believe that if there is interactive communication between the government and the people, then they can share as well real-time scenario, the respective community and exchange conversation, uh, give recommendations to improve further the risk and crisis communication and other activities of the local government in relation to, to their crisis response. Of course, the use of the native and local language is, is more uh, beneficial for the people. They, they appreciate if the local government units would provide them um, information in their local language, particularly if they, they, they would try to explain better or further the, the jargons, the technical terms that they, they see, they, they have read, uh, that the information that they receive. So it, it is um, beneficial for the community if they can easily comprehend the information that they are getting from various sources, particularly our local government unit. So here, I'll be presenting the, the model of the, of the, that we have came up from the survey that we have. So these are the factors that involve in risk perception formation. Generally, um, uh, we, we, we have uh, found out that there is a higher uh, risk perception from among the, the respondents, meaning they believe that it is risky for them uh, to, to go out and expose themselves that they might acquire or they might be infected by the disease. So what are the factors that, that, uh, that involves in, in this perception of risk? So one is perceived susceptibility perceives severity of the disease, life disruption, if, if how their, their daily activities have been disrupted by, by the emergence that the public health emergency that we are facing, and the perceived severity of the crisis. So uh, we need to, to understand this uh, risk perception so that we can connect and bridge the gap of the recent crisis communication that we are trying to relay to our um, um, members of the community. So as mentioned earlier, if there is, if the communication is timely and is frequent, then public would perceive that the, the risk 
and crisis communication of their local government unit is effective. And of course, this builds public trust. If the public perceive that, that the local government unit is effective in relaying and disseminating information and uh, useful information for them to decide what to do and how to protect themselves, then they would trust their local government units. So if there is higher perception, risk perception, and there is public trust in the local government unit, then people or the, the members of the community would perceive that the health and safety measures and protocols imposed to them by the respective local government units would uh, be beneficial for them. And hence, if that's the case, if, if they perceive that these pro health and safety protocols are beneficial for themselves, then they will practice self-protective behavior. These protocols will be followed by the public. However, of course, if, if, if they believe that it's not beneficial for them, then meaning they are not trusting their local government units and they will not follow self-protective behavior. So what are the ways to improve LG risk crisis communication in the context of COVID-19 response. So to improve risk crisis communication, local government units, based on what, what we have found out, so local government units should maximize the use of social media interactions, engagement with users. So most of, of the reviews that we had done in the social, social media accounts of the local government units, there are uh, recommendations from the public, there are questions from the public, but this um, feature has not been um, fully maximized by our local government units because they don't have, they might have not assigned a person to address queries, concerns, and other um, uh, feedback from the ground coming from the, 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 the public. Then use of multiple means or channels for communication. It's not only social media that is very important in terms of uh, providing information to the public because we need to target the, the right uh, persons. So we need to use other channels such as television for those who are not into social media. And uh, there are other um, media uh, networks as well, such as uh, radio or even text messaging. Uh, so long as you, you have understood the, 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 the the demographics of your locality. Then we need more updates and reports about local crisis situation so that the, the public would develop the sense of understanding about what's actually happening in other places and in their own places. And of course, with the, with the interaction with the local government, they can feed real-time information to respective local government units. Then we need to give as much as possible more frequent and active communication. Improve the quality of the reports and updates. Uh, information sharing and exchanges among neighboring LGUs in social media. Uh, we, we have this uh, observation wherein uh, people residing within the boundaries of the local government uh, units uh, tend to, to confuse what to follow because um, th there are conflicting um, policies from neighboring LGU. So we need to have information sharing among LGU so that people, the, the main purpose of research crisis communication is to educate the public on what to do and how to defend themselves or protect themselves from the virus. So we, we need to have a harmonization of local policies among uh, local government units. Then making use of public official social media Aside from the official social media accounts of the local government units, we have observed that there are more followers of the local chief executives of these local government units. So they seek information also to these accounts in uh, social media, the accounts of their mayors, the accounts of their governors. Also, we should not forget the, the involvement of the barangay. Uh, of course, in terms of disseminating information that they get from the next higher level of uh, next higher level of local government uh, structure. So, for example, they can tap uh, barangay officials to to disseminate information other than the the, the modern um, channels in uh, providing information to the public. 
to improve COVID-19 response, there should be strict and equal enforcement of policies and programs, strengthen healthcare and testing capacity, at least as of the moment, we, we have increased the number of uh, um, testing centers per local government units all throughout the country, more efficient and inclusive distribution of relief assistance, generally to, to avoid negative uh, perception from the public, maybe the local government units can uh, publish a schedule of when and, and where to distribute relief assistance so that people would would not uh, neg negatively perceive that uh, local government units are prioritizing the other areas compared to their own uh, respective locality. So there, 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 it is advised that there must be at least a publication of uh, information about um, the date and the, the, the area of distribution of these relief uh, assistance or goods. Then inclusion of schedule plan along with our reports and updates on local crisis response and management. Then, of course, since the, the transparency in terms of finances and expenses related to COVID response is one of the highest rated um, activity or posting of the local government units in their website, in their social media accounts, local government units should adopt transparency and accountability measures so that uh, they can gain more trust from their respective constituencies. So what we want to, to show here is if the government um, can closely partner with uh, um, local media institutions and then maximize their social media accounts, then there is um, effective risk and crisis communication. So here, we can build an equation that if there, if there is a close partnership between LGU and local or national media institutions coupled with the right activity and approaches they, they have in their social media accounts, then there will be accessible risk and crisis communication for the public. It's not only that you are providing information to the public, but it's how you are carrying uh, this information, transferring, providing this information to the public. And of course, we believe that media institutions and networks are important government partners in shaping public awareness about risk we face and providing updates, reports about the current situation so that we can help them provide more accessible uh, information, particularly in risk information, which is deemed essential during this very challenging time of great uncertainties. So, maraming salamat po. And uh, again, uh, this presentation, this paper is a collaboration with Xavier, um, our, our host for this afternoon from the CLRG. Okay, maraming salamat po, Sir um, Dr. Flores. Okay, let me just... Okay, so uh, before we uh, proceed sa ating uh, second uh, speaker for this afternoon, uh, I just would like to emphasize, uh, kasi si Sir si Dr. Flores uh, uh, focused on the findings of our study, but uh, I would like to emphasize also on the methodology we use for the research, uh, which was actually based on the guide of the World Health Organization on formulating a risk communication and community engagement plan which you can find online. So in our methodology, we use a survey to determine our samples uh, communication preferences, which allowed us to come up with recommendations about how LGUs can effectively communicate, like what communication channels and language to use, how frequent should LGUs try to communicate, presence of interact interactive communication, etc. And we were also to, able to gather, based from the survey, information that enabled us to determine possible types of communication messages um, to focus on in order to increase public trust and enable collective action, like financial reports, detailed reports of the crisis situation, and benefits of safety measures and protocols. I think uh, yung methodology namin uh, is a strategy that LGUs can also adopt. Same lang with how LGUs do development planning. You first do a situational analysis. So in risk crisis communication, you must first analyze the public's communication preferences and current 
risk crisis perception, and then afterward, afterwards, you set a goal or, or objective. In our case, we use public trust and collective action. Um, after that, you can then uh, come up with a plan on how and what will you communicate to the people based on your analysis of the public's communication preferences and risk crisis perception in order to achieve yung sinet yung na goals and objectives. Okay, thank you. So um, now we move on to our second discussion. Uh, our next speaker is a professor of public administration at the National College of Public Administration and Governance. Uh, he teaches organizational studies and management, research methodologies, voluntary sector management, and managing ICTs and knowledge for both graduate and undergraduate students. He has done extensive research on information and communication technologies for development, telecommunication policy, and e-governance or open government. In line with this, he has worked with various ICT 4D networks such as Learn Asia, Technology and Social Change uh, from the University of Washington, Strengthening Information Society Research Capacity Alliance, Open Net Initiative Asia, etc. He was the Asia Pacific Regional Coordinator for the Amy Mahan Research Fellowship and an editor of the book Living the Information Society in Asia. He was a research fellow for the Institute for Money, Technology, and Financial Inclusion. University of California, Irvine, and is currently a research grantee of the Sumitomo Foundation. He also previously served as director of the Center for Local and Regional Governance from 2014 to 2019 and director of the Center for Leadership and Citizenship and Democracy from 2011 to 2013. So in our first discussion, the use of social media, which is a type of information and communication technology, was already explored. To further discuss about the use of ICTs for disaster Disaster Management, here's uh, Dr. Erwin Alampay. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Naririnig niyo ba ako? Yes, sir. Ito yung screen ko? You, you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so, kanina, Raymond talked about the use of social media and focused particularly on the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, today, I'll talk more about uh, generic use of ICTs. So, it goes beyond social media. And then I'll talk about disasters in general. Also, I'll touch on uh, the COVID uh, pandemic as well. So to begin with, we have to talk about information and communication technologies. Ano ba talaga siya? So the ICTs are tools for communicating information. So uh, we, we say there could be analog, such as radio. They could be digital, like... Um, um, computers, uh, cell phones, and then social media and different websites are also applications that you consider as ICTs. Um, there are other ICTs. I don't know if you've heard of Internet of Things. Pero Internet of Things are literally yung mga devices natin, yung mobile phone mo, basta may internet siya. It's an Internet of Things. Diba? Or kung meron kang pacemaker, pag minsan nagpapadala yan ng SMS sa doktor, that's an Internet of Things. So, kunyari, I, I'm sure you've heard of mobility studies during the COVID crisis. They, they're able to do that kasi lahat tayo, especially those who with smartphones, natatrack yan ng mga mobile companies na lalaman kung lumalabas ba tayo sa bahay, kung gano tayo kadalas lumabas. And then there are what we call smart cities. And uh, UPRI, kunyari, is doing something like that. Meron ka mga tawag nito mga sensors. Like, kunyari, sa, sa al volcano, yung mga volcanoes natin, may sensors yan, na automatic nag-generate nag ng data. So, in some cities, they put uh, weather vanes, they, they monitor um, yung level of flooding uh, sa rivers, ganyan, uh, para malaman din yung, yung kung bumabahaba, tumataas yung levels of water, yung air quality. So, those are internet of things. So, and they are also ICTs. And to a certain extent, we need those things to, a to be able to monitor whether certain things are risky or dangerous. Like, kunyari, in some places like, uh, like in India, New Delhi, for instance, pag minsan nagsasara sila ng, ng, ng business pag masyadong polluted na yung hangin. Okay? So why are ICTs important in ter terms of communications research? Kasi tatandaan lang natin na yung access ng mga tao, I think Raymond touched on this a bit, varies from each ICT. So kunyari, ang radio and television, alam naman natin, ayan ang pinakangkalat na klaseng teknolohiya sa atin. 
And hence, uh, it's easy to reach far-flung places, even island community. Okay? Yung binigay na example about social media, siguro mas kalat yan in city. Okay? And sabi nga ni Raymond, it's at least you're interactive. Okay? So, but that said, even if we say uh, magandang may internet, magandang may laptop, magandang may social media, we recognize that not everyone has that. Okay? Uh, so, ang isang advantage nga ng radio, naabot kahit malayo. Kaya yung, yung problema with the closure of ABS-CBN, for instance, has implications with disaster management. Kasi kunyari nung tumama yung bagyo, kumakailan lang, tapos walang radyo, hindi alam ng mga tao na kailangan palang maghanda dahil merong bagyong padating. So, ang limitation naman ng radio and television is that, if you remember, nung, nung, nung at least ako, nung bata ako, pagigising kami ng alas 5, aabang ang namin yung radyo, aabang ang namin kung sasabihin yung walang pasok or meron. Merong particular time. So, it's uh, synchronous dapat. Merong oras na dapat na dun ka. Pag ma-miss mo yung announcement, then hindi mo malalaman. Okay? So that's the, that's the disadvantage with synchronous. Pero pag asynchronous, anytime you could actually check meron bang sinabi. Diba? So that's the advantage of that. Ang problema na sa mga, mga umaasa sa internet or umaasa sa, sa Wi-Fi okay, is that often pag merong disaster like a bagyo or, or a earthquake, usually ayan yung unang bumibigay. Kaya pag minsan sa mga eskwelahan, di ba yung mga merong mga go packs kayong hinahanda. Kasama sa mga packs pag minsan is meron kang radyo. Kasi pag bumagyo, bumaha, mawala ng kuryente, para kaya pa meron kang mobile phone or social media pero wala ka namang signal. So you just have to remember that these are these are the advantages. Each ICT has advantages and disadvantages. The next concept to think about is the uh, DRRM parang cycle. Kasi merong iba't ibang mga uh, areas yan. Merong disaster prevention, disaster preparedness, disaster response, merong rehabilitation. And in each phase, in a way, requires a different kind of information. Diba? So pag disaster prevention and mitigation, it requires you to know or find information that is useful for you to understand why something is happening. Okay? So, in uh, DRM, kunyari, in prevention mitigation, important talaga yung science dyan. So, kunyari, knowing where the, kung merong fault line or malaman mo saan ba yung mga flood-prone areas sa pag, pag nag-DRM planning ka, di ba? Para meron kang mga uh, risk areas. The same way, pag sinabi mo yung COVID, dapat naintindihan natin bakit ka nagkakasakit, paano ka nahahawa, saan mo makukuha. Sa preparedness naman, ginagamit mo rin yung information na yon para ma-prepare mo yung mga tao kung anong gagawin. So kunyari, vulnerable yung lugar mo sa flooding, dapat alam mo kung sa lilikas, kung sakaling binabaha or kung may signal. The same way na pag uh, alam mo kung paano mahawa, dapat alam mo kung kailan kailangan mag- magsuot ng mask Paano mo mababawasan yung chances na mahahawa ka? Sa response naman, nandun yung mga warning systems mo. Like kunyari, dati, storm signals lang yung pinag-uusapan. Signal number one, two, three. Pag signal number two, wala nang pasok. Pag signal number three, college, walang pasok. Pero lately, we talk about storm surge warnings. We talk about rainfall warnings, yellow, uh, orange, red. Okay? The same way na ngayon, meron tayong mga uh, sinasabi na mga ECQ, GCQ, ano dapat gagawin mo. So kasama dyan sa, for you to be able to respond properly, dapat napiprepare ka rin. Okay? Natuturuan sa'yo paano mo gawin. And marami tayong nakikita ngayon na mga information on on the internet about it. And sometimes nagko-conflict nga. And the, the, the challenge there is actually knowing what an accurate source is. And being able to kumaga intermediate Ibig sabihin intermediate is to get information and then use other channels to, to communicate that better. So for instance, I'll give you I'll give examples later. Pero uh, essentially, ayun yung 
kailangan pag-isipan natin when we think about information and communication technologies, yung natututunan natin doon. Pero pag-communicate natin, does it necessarily have to be through the communication technologies? Because in in organizations, it is the organizational structure which is actually our way of communicating. So pwedeng during a pandemic, pwedeng ang fracture, which could be the barangay health worker or the tanod or the police officer, sila yung tuturuan natin ng tamang information that could have been taken from whether it's internet or radio or TV and transmitted to them in a more understandable manner. So, um, gali lang ah. So, example ko, yung Yolanda. Okay? Um, Yolanda, we know, I think a lot of you experienced that. Um, when it happened, Pag-asa was talking about storm surges. Okay? And I don't think a lot of us understood what a storm surge was until we experienced it. Kasi ang, ang message lang na alam natin or ano, is signal. So when a storm surge happened, now we understand that ang storm surge pala parang tsunami pala yan. It's different from a tsunami, but it's literally a wall of water flowing or rising to above the, 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 above the land. So ang isang tanong dyan is nung communicate yan ng, ng pag-asa before, I, I remember it was, I heard that on AM radio, I couldn't visualize it. So part of the challenge is actually how to visualize a storm surge. Okay? Problema mo dyan is kaya mo ba yan i-transmit sa radio? Kaya mo ba yan siya i-transmit sa, sa TV? Sa social media? But, but then again, you have to think of sino yung makakakita niyan? Okay? If a lot of people in rural areas don't have internet, they won't be able to see a visual picture. It could be uh, yung barangay health workers can make posters or provide illustrations. The same way sa pandemic, sabihin, magsuot ka ng mask. Again, in social media or in the internet, you could see very good visual uh, on bakit kailangan. Ginito pala mag-travel. So the visual is helpful. Ang hirap siya explain uh, orally. Or this this poster of the mask is very helpful because it tells you how protected you are. So localizing such kinds of information would be helpful. Ito example naman, I got, ako dati, I, 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 was, I tested positive. So nag-aral-aral ako kung ano-ano yung kailangan ba magpa-PCR uh, test. And I got this from my Facebook account. Okay, but again, pag binasa mo yan, hindi siya madaling sundan. So part of it is how to make it more understandable. So some people might like flowcharts. Ako, I, I'm familiar with flowcharts. But again, not everybody could understand flowcharts. So the challenge is communicating information that you know is reliable and repackaging it in a way such that your users or citizens understand it. Ito, again, I like this. But again, ang tanong ko lang is maintindihan ba ng tao to? na pag binuksan mo yung bintana mo, it reduces the chance of actually uh, getting the virus. Okay? Because you minimize the viral load. The other picture there, it talks about buying local. So I just want to highlight the fact that, again, different stages of the disaster process, uh, disaster risk and recovery process, iba't ibang klaseng uh, materials or information pwede mo makuha. Okay? So in, in summary, I just wanted to highlight that ang isang importanteng tandaan is ano yung message and information. Okay? In this day and age, ang problema mo lang is sobrang dami mong pinagkukuhanan. Sobrang daming potential places of getting it. But I, I suppose as a local government or government, government is expected to be uh, authoritative to this information. So kaya sa inyo pumupunta. So make sure that the information you get is science-based or based on evidence. Second is access to ICTs and access to sources of data. Okay, so remember the access to the technologies vary from uh, government to government, from citizens to citizen, and repackaging that message or information to make it accessible to as many people as possible. Hindi mo pwede sabihin, ah, hindi, sinabi ko na sa social media, you'd expect everybody to know it. Parang a good example of that is yung DepEd. Mag-survey daw sila online on capacity to have access to, to email and computers. Di siyempre, ang taas nung, nung sumagot na meron silang access kasi they, they surveyed online. Di ba? So tatandaan lang natin na iba-iba yung 
capacities or capabilities sa mga tao. Siguro yung yung last thing to remember is tone. Okay? Marami kang pwedeng ways of communicating a message. Some people are playful, nagjo-joke, etc. But I think in a disaster, you have to be authoritative. You have to be serious about it. You have to be empathic. Well, hindi hindi pwedeng yung meron kang joke tas meron kang seryoso. Dapat clear that your your the, the urgency of the the pandemic and it's also if you want to have a hopeful message it's also a realistic message um yung yung panghuli ko na lang this is more generic on this if you're designing things online for services uh remember lang what you start with user needs in this case anong classing information for a disaster are they looking for in a pandemic they might want to know paano ba ako nahahawa in the pandemic they might say gusto ko malaman paano ako makatulong or they might say paano ko ba kukunin yung ayuda di ba second do less okay you don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel you work with uh kung meron namang ibang LGUs who have a system that works then you could copy it e ka nga ni ni mayor Vico Soto sabi niya magaling magaling sa mga opya doon sa iba't ibang mga mayors kasi magagaling din naman talaga may marami tayong matututunan sa ibang mayors Um, third is designed with data. Ibig sabihin, this is partly being able to measure whether people are going to your website, going to your social media, or going to your services. Paano nila kinukuha yun? Okay? Yung fourth and fifth, uh, as much as possible, you try to make it as simple as possible. And always try to improve on your communication system. I'll, I'll end with uh, sixth and seventh because I think this is the, the, the main lesson naman dito. Is that when you de design a service, in this case, a disaster response service or disaster uh, mitigation service, you try to design for everyone. Okay, big sabihin ng everyone, whether kung bulag, makaka-access sa information, yung bingi, may pamaraan, yung mga matanda, yung mga masa malayo. Okay, we have to understand the context of paano nila kinukuha yung data, anong lingwahe nila, and uh, anong facilities meron, and in a disaster, what are the likely facilities that you have to, or you can only work with. So I'll end with that. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Okay, maraming salamat po, uh, Sir Irwin. Okay. Uh, so yung uh, discussion, Sir Irwin, no, reaffirms also yung uh, naging findings from the uh, our, our research on risk crisis communication. So binanggit na niya, for example, uh, ni Sir Irwin, yung different advantages and disadvantages of different ICTs. That's why we have to use uh, different channels or means uh, of communication. Kasi tulad ng sabi ni Sir, may iba-ibang accessibility yung mga tao. That's why sa respective localities nyo, sa LGUs, uh, maganda kung kumuha kayo ng data. Ano ba yung context doon sa inyong uh, localities Marami bang may internet or uh, marami bang may access or marami bang gumagamit ng social media, uh, etc. And then you decide ano ba yung pinaka-effective uh, means to communicate with your people. And then it explained din ni Sir no, yung ICTs, uh, yung different uh, application areas ng ICT sa iba-ibang phases ng DRRM. Um, and uh, maganda rin yung sinabi ni Sir about um, marami kasing technical na information sa pagdating sa disaster management. So you'll have to repackage yung information na understandable sa uh, inyong constituents. Okay. So before we proceed po sa ating third discussion, we'll have a five-minute break. So um, uh, on choose your Zoom merienda, unlimited, pwedeng bumalik. Huwag po tayo maya. So mag magta-timer lang po tayo dito to monitor uh, kung kailan natin kailangan bumalik na. Okay.
Okay, so mag-start na po tayo in a few seconds. Okay po, so welcome back. Sana'y nabusog kayo sa aming po online merienda. So our next speaker po is a development professional with more than a decade of experience in strategic communications and knowledge management. She's currently a communications and knowledge management consultant for the Asian Development Bank and a United Nations agency. Uh, in 2013, she was assigned in Tacloban shortly after the onslaught of Super Typhoon Yolanda, where she was heavily involved in communicating with communities' activities. She earned her degree in development communication from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and is currently completing a course on user experience design at the International Design Foundation. So to talk about communicating with communities amidst, amidst a crisis, here's Ms. Karen Lapitan. Thank you, Maki. I'll just share my screen. Okay, Paul. Ayan. Kita na? Yes, Paul. Thank you. Thank you again sa invite. Actually, ang galing din ang timing kasi... Uh, one week before ako in-approach ng organizer, nag-usap din kami ng office mix na paano ba tutulungan yung LGUs na i-improve yung communications aspect ng response. Kasi ano din, nag-observe din ako ng bawa sa Facebook posts. Yung iba medyo hindi malinaw yung messaging. So hindi din natin masisay, di ba? Kasi hindi naman lahat din ng LGUs afford din mag-hire talaga ng comms professional na experience sa crisis. Di ba may mga joke pa na gusto mag-migrate sa Pasig? Pero yun, later uh, share natin. No? Kasi hindi naman lahat din talaga kakayanan. Tingnan natin ano yung pwedeng applicable din for LG. So yung part po ng uh, discussion ko, uh, it's ano, more on about Peonu experience later sa Yolanda. Pero ngayon, mas ano siya, uh, mga example lang na pwedeng replicate uh, perhaps ng ibang LGU na struggling din talaga ngayong uh, COVID-19. So, I'm not sure if lahat uh, familiar kay Tatay Alberto. I saw this on Facebook last June, Father's Day. Tapos, ayan, ang dami naging share. Eh, nung time na yon, I had this, ano, parang kaya na ba for a cost workshop? Nakarelease kami ng konting pondo and then naghahanap kami ng beneficiary uh, na particularly jeepney drivers who were affected na ano, yung na-displace yung sa work nila dahil sa COVID-19. So, sakto, nakita ko yung photo, but then yung naging challenge namin is how to reach Tatay Alberto. Kahit wala akong kilala nun sa ABS-CBN na reporter, kahit nag-message ako, kaso kailangan namin agad, uh, hindi namin alam yung contact info ni Tatay Alberto. Tapos, ano, fortunately, may isang nag-comment lang, o diba, dun lang din namin nalaman yung ano, contact information ni tatay, it turns out, syempre, ano, hindi naman sa, in-expect namin na siguro hindi siya sanay din sa smartphone. Yun niya, uh, totoong wala siyang smartphone. Tapos, nag-rely na lang kami dun sa isang netizen na, ano, mabait na nagbigay uh, ng contact information niya. Tapos, nag-request kami ng video call just to check if taga dun talaga sa area si tatay. Yung isang stranger yung tumulong sa amin. So, sobrang grateful kami. So, sa issue nyo yun, uh, nalaman namin na analog na yung phone ni tatay. Tapos, hindi siya nag reply sa text. Kahit nung nakuha ko na yung number niya, hindi siya nag reply hindi siya natawag. Uh, hindi siya nasagot ng tawag namin. So, ang naging uh, resolution namin ay puntahan siya uh, para magbigay ng tulong based doon sa na-release naming pondo. So, same case din sa any disaster. Kahit nung Typhoon Yolanda experience, uh, maling i-assume na lahat ay may reach ng social media. So, kaya kailangan din natin i-adjust tayo mga L nasa LGUs. So, yung ano ba yung ano, uh, available na means para sa target audience natin sa communities. So, eto, uh, photo lang nung sa Yolanda. Actually, end na ako a few weeks after the typhoon. As in, ganyan. Ganyan yung makikita nyo. Uh, yung mobile phones namin, halos useless siya. Tapos, internet, Uh, halos wala actually. Tapos wala electricity. Uh, meron lang kami sa living generator set for ano for humanitarian workers dun sa hotel. Pero as in pag mag-attach kami ng email, minsan one hour, 
So yun, we have to consider also yung type ng uh, crisis and then adjust yung magiging ano natin, communications plan according sa ano lang available na channels. Meron pa akong experience dyan sa Tacloban. Uh, we were looking for someone then na na-interview before. Hindi ako yung nag-interview. Kaso nga, walang signal, walang kuryente. As in, uh, paano ba term doon? Nag-ikot talaga kami sa barangay para mahanap siya. So yon mal- malaking challenge talaga pag uh, ganitong kalaking crisis no? ang hinaharap natin. So, tingnan natin. Mamaya, uh, i-check natin ano ba yung pwedeng applicable or pwedeng i-replicate ng mga LGUs. So, information saves lives. So, sa mga crisis, usually, no, uh, syempre, andyan yung ayuda, yung food, uh, yung pera na ibibigay natin sa communities. But then, we have to consider also na yung mismong information na binibigay or sineshare natin sa communities ay makakasave ng buhay. Kasi kung mali-mali or hindi timely yung pagbibigay natin, uh, malaki yung problema yan para sa community. Lalo na ngayon COVID-19, yung pagsusot nga ng mask, okay na ano, na sinasabi natin sa community yung proper, yung proper na magsusot ng mask. At saka ano lang yung effective na mga mask. May recent study yung, hindi ko sure anong university, yung nag-test ng mga effective na mask. Although we have to understand also na hindi naman lahat sa community ay afford kung ano man yung effective na yon. So later, uh, discuss din natin yun. Doon sa information, uh, kasi minsan ano eh, pag mabilisan, no, uh, ina-assume natin na maintindihan ng mga nasa community kung ano yung naintindihan natin. So also, kailangan natin din yung i-process. No? Uh, usually sa comms, Maganda kung gagawa tayo ng analogies. Nakita ko yung video kanina, okay siya. Kasi mas madali process ng brain in general kung may visual. Kung baga may, may imagine tayong case uh, for a certain situation. For example, yung COVID-19, uh, pwedeng sabihin na nag-spread siya like wildfire na mention kanina. So pag may ganun, kailangan natin i-contain or pigilan yung pag-spread. So yan, like virus, yung words kasi are infectious, no? So, pwede siyang makakulate ng panic or ng fear sa community. Kaya dapat maging careful tayo kung paano natin uh, gagawin or i-disseminate yung information. Eto, yung kanina, just like Tatay Alberto. At marami pang mga Tatay Alberto, I'm sure, hindi lang sa Manila, no? hindi lang sa Metro Manila, at lalo na sa ibang uh, areas, sa rural areas, na hindi naman na-access yung information na meron. For example, Ang dami nating nakikita, diba? Si De- si DOH, mayroon siya everyday na briefing, no? So, para sa atin, uh, ang dali lang ma-access ng information dahil mayroon man tayong Facebook. Pero sa iba, hindi siya ganun kadali. So, we have to consider then talaga. Later, ano, may... Hindi. Pwede kong i-share. May make it kasi na pwede tayong gawin saan. Ito. Yeah, na mention ko kanina, natatawa ako dun sa joke before na ano, yung ang daming gustong mag-migrate mag-gra- daw to Pasig. Oh, ayun. Disclaimer, taga-Pasig ako. So, uh, may personal observation din ako kung paano sila nag dito sa sa Pasig hanggang sa barangay level. So, yon For me, or sa lahat ng comms professional, I'm sure they would agree na one size does not fit all. We have to be, uh, we have to consider also, ano ba yung kakayanan din ng LGUs? Kasi, example, yon dito sa amin sa Pasig, uh, yung supplemental, yung SAP, di ba may mga hindi na-cover, tapos naglabas yung LGU na i-cover nila yung iba. So, nangyari naman yon Pero yon uh, hindi naman lahat din ng LGUs kakayanin yun. Kahit yung sa education na ano na part, nag-alat na din yung LGU dito ng pondo para sa mga walang mobile phones or tablets. Pero syempre, hindi naman afford ng lahat ng LGU. Hindi naman lahat kasi ngayaman ng Pasig or ng Makati. So yon Dapat uh, alam din ng mga LGUs ano lang ba yung mga resources. Hindi ko sure eh. Ano bang ano? Yung sa rules ng national government sa downloading ng funds. Maybe later sa discussion, no? pwede natin uh, i-check din yun. Kasi unfair din sa ibang LGUs na nag expect tayo ng sobrang laki. Pero... In reality, wala naman sa kanila yung resources. Tapos, eto. 
eto isa sa naging issue ko kasi originally I'm from Laguna. Pero ngayon nasa Pasig ako. Ang napapansin ko na no, compare ko sa Pasig, uh, more than the numbers, may mga binibigay silang information paano, ano ang gagawin ko. Uh, oh, and yan yung numbers din. Anong gagawin ko after? So dito kasi yung messaging very reassuring din na if nakaramdam ka ng ganitong sintomas, tawagan mo to, may sundo sa'yo. Na nangyari din yan sa amin dito, mismo sa tingkirahan ko. Uh, nung may one case na nag-positive na neighbor, uh, nakakuha agad kami ng sulat from our from our barangay or administrator na ano, na ito yung gagawin mo just in case yung mangyari. Tapos for na sinundo na nila yung nag-positive at walang dapat i-worry kasi nag-disinfect na sila ng buong building. Pero yun, uh, hindi kasi sa lahat ng communication materials na napansin ko, nakalagay yun na ano, walang reassuring na message. Nakalagay lang ilan ang nag-positive for today, ilan ang namatay. And sa iba, it might create panic or map- mapalala pa yung anxiety. So we have to improve then yung sa messaging. eto provide what they need when they need it um so ang stand ko diyan lg you should communicate clearly and frequently hindi enough na ayun na mention din kanina yung sa social media kaya nagsakto din no? na yung mga once a day sa tingin ko hindi siya effective kasi pwedeng hindi siya nakita ng ibang constituents niyo o example lang sa Vietnam isa sila sa mga may good practices de ba sa lahat ng bansa they have loudspeakers roaming around. Hindi lang siya once a day from what I know. Based dun sa kwento din, nakakilala ko mga, mga nasa Vietnam sila na office mates. So, usually twice a day in some areas. Pero same message. And then, very clear ang message na ano ang kailangan nilang gawin just in case may sintomas. And then, ayun, kung may mga updates din, loudspeakers sa ibang areas na hindi abot ng internet. So, yun. For me, communicate clearly and frequently. Uh, important siya for LGUs. Tapos yung Facebook Live, actually, na-appreciate ko din siya. No? <clears throat> Kasi yung mga timely na information or yung mga kailangan ng discussion and then nagiging two-way na rin yung yung, uh, yung communication. No? May mga nagko-comment and then sinasagot agad ng ibang mayors natin. So, sa context ng disaster, uh, very important yung pagiging frequent yung pagbibigay ng information. Ito, these are just some examples. Random lang. Actually, very quick lang yung presentation. Uh, these are some of the digital so, uh, na, or social media platforms na tinap ng mga LGUs na pwede nating replicate if kakayanin ng ating resources. So, So, this is just an example. Halos, hindi naman halos lahat, I think. Pero karamihan na yata, hindi, marami ng LGUs ang nagamit ng Facebook. Uh, lalo yung iba, Facebook Live, no, regularly, na nag-update sa constituents nila. So, ang kagandahan ni Facebook, marami kang may reach din na, ano, na constituents, kahit nga sa, ano, eh, mga nasa labas. Example ako, I'm from Laguna, pero kailangan ko ng update. Then, uh, what's happening in Laguna? kahit na nasa Pasig ako, kasi gusto kong malaman ano na ang ganap, ilan na yung positive, uh, and what are the efforts of, of the local government. So, yun. Maganda siya kasi since it's free, so pwede, kahit sinong LGU siguro, pwede mag-create ng Facebook page. And then, ang issue lang dito, syempre, ayun, maganda rin na ano siya, uh, two-way siya. During may Facebook Live, uh, usually dito sa Pasig, uh, real-time, nagko-comment kami, if may hindi malinaw, example about sa SAP or about dun sa education program ng, ng LGU. So, yung iba sinasagot ng mayor. If hindi nasagot, usually nag email or Facebook message kami doon. And then, in fairness, sumasagot naman sa amin yung, ano, yung PIO ng LGU. Ito. Sorry, Anna, medyo bias sa Pasig kasi based lang din, din siya sa ano, personal experience. So, sa Facebook, uh, as in real, uh, very frequent yung pag-update nila. Ito, example, uh, yung Community Mart, uh, it really help yung mga dito sa, ano, sa Ortigas area ako. So, mal- malayo kami sa palengke. So, sa grocery naman, meron. Pero yung pila, grabe yung, ano, yung pila, 
two hours to four hours, pila pa lang. Yung before to, yung start pa lang nung ano natin, nung community quarantine. So yung community mart, nalaman ko lang siya sa Facebook. And then, na, tinay ko siya agad. Uh, so sobrang okay nung, ano, nung service nila. And then dito, sa barangay level, yung barangay captain, nag-create siya ng Viber group. Uh, so, sa na to nyo kasi ang demographic niya ay, ano talaga, mga young professionals karamihan. So, very appropriate din yung Viber group and yung Facebook page nila to update. E ang maganda dito, real-time siya. Meron din silang mobile palengke in our barangay. So, may time pa nga na, ano, na sinasabi nila na nasa na yung, ano, yung mobile palengke para bababa ka na lang ng bahay mo, bibili ka na doon. So, real-time yung updates nila. And then, isa pang example natin. Ito, hindi siya directly na COVID talaga na update sa statistics or sa response. But then, tandang ka si Mayor Isko, uh, nilaunch niya to, yung messaging nila is to is to help people na they can still pay their taxes, I think, or kung ano man yung financial just nila sa local government without leaving their houses. Tapos, i-adapt na siya even before, ah, uh, even after COVID. Dati pa yata ito na-develop, pero in-improve nila recently. So, yon Para sa mga may resources, mobile app could be something that you can try. Pero, you have to check also yung demographics nung, nung community nyo. Kasi, if may mobile app ka nga, eh, ilan lang may smartphone dun sa sa municipality, uh, wala rin. Sayang lang din yung pera. At SMS. Uh, kung tandaan nyo yung NDRRMC din, ito yung ginagamit, diba? Pag may earthquake, uh, in-update tayo, pag may bagyo. So, yung ibang LGU, since may resources, or yung iba nang pag-partner, ginamit nila ito. Ito, example lang, City of Naga sa Cebu. So, I learned na meron silang text blast din. Okay to kasi hindi naman lahat may smartphone or may uh, data. O, meron din daw sa Manila, which is okay. So, na-experience ko din to personally sa passing. Pero, ano siya, about SAP lang, update sa SAP. So, okay siya kasi at least hindi blind din yung, ano, yung ibang constituents na limited yung access sa internet. Hindi naman kagaya natin lahat na, bawa ako, eight, more than 8 hours a day online. Dahil work from home, eh yung iba hindi nila kayang tutukan sa internet. So, SMS is okay if okay. If kaya ng resources. For this one, I learned yung City of Naga. Nakipag-partner sila sa Smart. Ayan, Quezon City din, meron silang Smart in Focus, which is, uh, which I think, very effective din. So, if kakaya niya ng resources ng LGUs natin, it may be a good example. Of, it's a good example, actually. Ito, hotline, call center. Na-experience ko to even before COVID-19 sa Yolanda. A lot of or international organizations and even yung uh, LGUs, nag-come up sila ng hotline or call center. Usually, yung before, yung sa Yolanda na context is about complaints or bawa, may hindi na-reach ng, ano, ng ayuda dun sa isang barangay or isang municipality. They can... Uh, they can just uh, call or text yung dedicated hotline. So sa atin, sa context ni COVID-19, si Marikina meron silang hotline. So yan, para alam din nila, no, uh, just in case yun, may, may lagnat or uh, may iba pang sintomas ng COVID, alam nila sino ba yung tatawagan nila or text nila para doon. Pero syempre, challenge siya for other LGUs. Uh, Yung sa amin sa Laguna, I don't think meron kaming dedicated hotline para sa COVID-19. No? Kasi ano siya, uh, kailangan talaga din ng resources for this, uh, for this communication channel. Meron ka dapat dedicated staff uh, and information management staff para dito. So you have to check also if kakayanan ba ng LGU. Ito ang mahati rin, they also have their hotline. Also QC, ang tanda ko, meron din sila. Quezon City. Ito din, no, nakalagay uh, sino, ano yung number na tawagan nila and then what will happen after. Ito yung very reassuring, for me, uh, very reassuring na pag may, nangy- pag may problem sa'yo, andyan yung LGY. Hindi ako taga Makati, pero later baka yung mga taga Makati pwede mag-share. Kasi sa Pasig ko lang siya na-experience. Yung isang neighbor na yun, nung no, may pa yata yun, yung sinundu siya nung taga City Hall. 
eto, signage as a notice board. Uh, although ngayon, lahat ta- halos lahat stay at home, pero uh, I think, ano pa rin, very helpful pa rin itong signage as a notice board. Uh, kasi hindi, yun, na-mention kanina, hindi tayo lahat may access sa internet. And yung iba, for example, pupunta sa palengke, or yung iba naman reporting sa work, pwedeng makatulong sa kanila yun uh, para as guide then or ko pag may information na kailangan silang malaman. Example. Ito marami nang gumawa nito pero ano lang, ko ano lang accessible sa akin na ano na meron. So, ito yung mga verbal cues na ah uh, sorry, yung mga visual cues na pwede nating ilagay sa lalo sa palengke or sa stores may mga ganyan. Kahit yung mga malls ngayon naglalagay na sila, 'di ba? Ni require din yata sila. So, very helpful siya to guide them. Kasi, mga, sabihin ko, social distancing, dapat one meter apart. Eh, sa, ano, sa ordinary na tao, parang, ano po ba yung one meter apart? Kung may visuals tayo, alam nila, ano ba yung space na kailangan nilang, ano, ibigay dun sa makakalapit nila. So, yan, okay siya. Kasi ako, uh, hindi ako nagsubscribe dun sa pasaway culture na, ano, na sinasabi. For me, if we communicate effectively, many would actually follow. Pero yun, we have to work then sa messaging. Should be simple and effective. For this one, this can reach doon mga tao na walang mobile phones. And also, para sa ano, syempre may iba din naman tayo sa audience na no read, no write. So dapat uh, marriage, gra- ano, yung messaging natin ay may graphics din. So this one is an example from Mindanao naman, Zamboanga and Lanao del Sur. UN agency tsaka Acted Philippines yung nag-work para dito. So they have posters uh, paano mag, uh, yung proper washing ng hands and then they localized yung COVID-19 messaging. So very important no yung yung translation sa vernacular kasi yun, experience ulit sa land uh, waray yung uh, salita nila, ba? Diba? So, we have to exert extra effort, of course, yung paano sasabi ko communicate sa community yung mga dapat nilang malaman. Kaya, yun, nakakarilita ako kanina kayo, sir, yung sa storm surge. Kahit ako, hindi ko siya naintindihan nung before Yolanda. Tapos, uh, when we did interview sa community nga, uh, marami sa kanila hindi rin talaga alam ano ba yun. So, ang hirap kapag, ano, hindi nila naintindihan ano ba yung dapat nilang gawin or ano ba mismo yung threat sa community. So for me, your information to be shared should be in a language that your community or the people should would understand. So hindi porket understandable sa atin, ay understandable na sa lahat. So ito din, appreciate ko din yung sa San Agustin Romblon para din ma-experience tayo sa ibang uh, LGUs. No? Uh, translate nila yung algorithm nung sa yung sa DOH, yung kung kailan ka pwede magpa-test before pa yata nila ito ginawa. So, this is very helpful if kaya sa LGUs, lalo na dun sa rural areas na i-translate yung mga IEC materials or yung communication materials from DOH. Later, may share ako na uh, send ko na lang sa organizer na pwede siguro ninyong template kasi I understand hindi naman lahat kaya mag-hire ng graphic artist or ng communications person na tutok sa ganito. Kasi even after COVID-19, ma-apply pa rin namin na, natin to it. Knowing na yung Philippines ay very prone sa disaster. So, yan. Ito, ano lang din. Uh, actual experience din sa field na ano ba yung mga naging problem or paano ba sana natin isosolve yung uh, yung communicating with communities, lalo na sa context ng disaster. So, yan. Na-mention ko kanina. When I arrived in Tacloban, around ano yun eh first week of december yata as in gusto ko na siya gusto ko na umuwi <laughs> paglapag ng airplane para siyang ano para siyang binomba na ano hindi ko maintindihan wala akong nakita na structure structure na okay lahat tapos yung mobile phone ko walang signal ha, walang signal tapos ano kanina may nagtanong yung sa ABS-CBN, na may uh, kwento ko na may personal experience din ako sa ganun eh, sa signal. So, eto. Example. Sa context ng uh, nung Super Typhoon Yolanda, uh, ano ah, very effective yung naging group discussions of, or FGDs. 
yung ano, group discussions nga. We did it sa summer and late. Eh. Since wala naman nung ano, restriction sa social or sa physical distancing, so naging effective sa amin yung FGDs na nakikinig kami ano ba yung needs ng communities and then sila din, may way sila na magsabi sa amin uh, ano ba yung kailangan nila or ano ba yung problema sa communities nila. So usually, ano to, small groups and then yun, before kami mag-interview or mag-conduct ng session, ito, uh, we attended this training course on effective listening to disaster-stricken communities. Kasi minsan, hindi porket kasama natin sa community feeling natin, alam, uh, kaya natin silang, uh, okay lang na tanongin sila na kung ano-ano. Especially sa sa context na to, disaster, maraming namatayan. Even kahit sa COVID siguro, baka may mga communities na ano, nag-grieving din na may mga namatay na kakilala. So we have to be very sensitive then in case we will choose this ano this option. Pero yon baka sa ibang crisis na natin ito magamit. No? Pero yon we have to take note na in conducting activities, we have to be sensitive then and compassionate also. And then observe yung nonverbal cues kasi usually experience sa Yolanda ano medyo ano pa nahihiya sila na magsabi probably it's about trust then na hindi syempre agad na pagkakatiwalaan kanila to say what they think or what they need so yon observe nonverbal cues then ayan community radio na mention din kanina ni sir yung sa importance ng sa radio ako i can watch na sobrang helpful nito during the Yolanda response so as in wala parang ang signal ko lang nun ay smart pero as in sobrang bagal ano ba yon hindi pa nga 3G ano ba before 3G yun hindi ako makasend na email or one hour nga if may attachment tapos walang kuryente na dependent lang kami noon sa generator and then syempre uh, na wash out halos lahat maraming bahay so yung iba walang TV wala yung iba nga walang radio eh pero fortunately yung ibang organizations nag-provide sila ng solar powered na radio para affected uh, para uh, inform pa din sila sa information so yon uh, may personal experience din ako sa community radio noon we worked with uh, Peko John it's based in Cebu yata no uh, they help us sa community meeting with communities yung community radio they ha- they organize this weeks yata after or one month after So, merong accountability hour na tinatawag every Saturday. So, para may chance din yung taga-community na sabihin ano ba yung complaints nila. So, naging two-way feedback din na, na rin siya. Since limited, halos lahat walang TV. So, radio sobrang naging helpful. And then, community radio. So, ano, waray. In waray yung salita. No? So, malaking tulong yung para sa community natin. Ito din, na nag- may question kanina no about meron bang area sa Pinas na ABS-CBN lang yung yung meron. Ako one year ako sa Tacloban and sa one year na yon yung signal lang ng TV ko na nabili ko doon ay ABS-CBN. So hindi ko sure kung nag-improve ngayon. That was 2014 until early 20, 2013 to 2014. Kahit anong gawin ko, ABS-CBN lang yung channel niya. Kaya uh, every afternoon nakatotok ako sa ano, sa ABS-CBN TV Patrol in Waray. Parang doon ko inaaralan kasi I don't speak Waray. So, ano, kumbaga sa context, mas nag-iintindihan ko siya. And alam ko yung benefit niya sa community kasi yung stories ay about them. Uh, bawa, ano ba yung may job openings or sino yung may bigay ng ayuda or ano ba yung mga nangyayari sa community. Kaya ako personally sobrang ano din affected din ako nung nawala yung ano regional news net regional news groups ng ABS-CBN kasi I understand hindi lahat ng er- yung maraming rural areas ang ABS-CBN lang yung channel. Eto ang ginawa no ng is- ng community is an international organization. They partnered with ABS-CBN Talk Global. Na experience ko din to kasi when I arrived ah uh, wala pa akong sariling TV so yon may mga public screenings ng news and broadcasts para ano para inform kami ano na bang nangyayari sa community kasi sobrang hirap talaga nang hindi mo alam ano yung nangyayari outside your house 
Tapos, ano, parang may time pa na na few months after may bagyo. May mga nasira doong ano, uh, structure din months after na yun ng, ano, ng Yolanda. So, sobrang helpful para sa amin na alam namin na may risk na padating given na limited yung, ano, yung access namin sa internet. So, eto, uh, I'll ask Maki to forward uh, sa inyo yung links. Mer- meron pa akong isang template na gusto kong i-share na I think will be very helpful sa LGUs. May checklist doon. Ano ba yung pwedeng applicable sa inyo? Ano yung resources na kailangan nyo if you will choose this uh, particular communication channel? So, pwede siguro sa next Ayaw naman natin ang mga next disaster. Pero dapat sana prepared tayo no? na meron or walang disaster. Alam natin yung gagawin in case of emergency. Lalo dito sa NCR, ako nga I'm thinking yung sa big one, yung earthquake. Uh, I'm not sure if ready. Ano bang gagawin? Kasi most likely mawala ng kuryente, walang internet. So anong gagawin natin? After? So ako personally, ano, parang... Gusto ko sana din tumulong sa ganong aspect. Pero I'm not sure if ano na yung, ano, yung action doon ng government. Pero ngayon, COVID tayo. So, yun. Eto din, in case hindi pa kayo familiar, nagbabrowse ako dito minsan ng mga good practices din yun. Sabi nga ni Mayor ng Valenzuela at ng Pasig, no, okay lang magkopyahan. So, magkopyahan tayo in a good way. And dito, yung iba pang good practices na pwede. I think pwede rin kayo mag-contribute no? kung meron kayong Maganda ginagawa. For QC, for example, kung may hotline pala or may iba pa kayong feeling nyo, ano hindi pa nagagawa ng ibang LGUs, pwede nyo i-share dito sa website na to. I'm not part of this project, pero yon sobrang helpful siya for me kasi may ginawa kami last week na guidance note for cities. So, sobrang helpful niya. Kasi nagkaroon kami ng context, ano lang ba yung kaya or ano na yung ginagawa per LGU. Ayan. Thank you. Ayan. Later, ano, share ko ano pa yung ibang materials na I think could be helpful din sa, sa inyo mga taga-LGUs. Ayun lang, Maki. Thank you. Thank you po, uh, Miss Karen. Okay. Salamat uh, dun sa mga ano, um, examples din ni Miss Karen. Mas nare-reaffirm yung mga kanina pa natin um, kinikwento no, about um, make information available and accessible, um, use of visuals, uh, make information also more understandable to the public, um, more frequent na communication, and use of two-way uh, and interactive communication channels as well. So now we can proceed to our reactor. So our reactor for today is Mr. Ben Aguijon. Is a, he is a licensed environmental planner with 10 years of professional practice on research analytics and program management in urban planning, climate change, social governance, policy, environment development, and market. He also he holds a bachelor's degree in human ecology, major in human settlements planning from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. Currently, he works for the United Nations Human Settlements Program, Philippines, or UN Habitat, as city coordinator of Legaspi City, Albay. Again, uh, here's Mr. Ben Aguijon. Narinig ako? Yes, sir. Uh, clear? Yes, it's clear, sir. Um, wait. I-load ko lang yung presentations. Yes, please. Uh, good afternoon po sa lahat. Uh, I hope uh, everyone is safe, sane, healthy uh, amidst this pandemic. Okay, go. Maka-share naman. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, for my input, so, uh, I would inform, inform you to have uh, a step back uh, in the discussion as to how uh, and the process available to local government units to develop it. You input to follow up there on uh, how we can include the communication work on the operations of local government units on the framework available to us. Sa uh, sir, uh, be, sorry. sir, okay lang yung mic niya pa ano lang sa para lang mas uh, clear. Better now? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, well, my inputs will be on how the communication work uh, will be included on uh, plans, uh, programs, and local government units. 
And uh, uh, yes, there is uh, the uh, communicating with voice effective uh, kind of its analysis, uh, both in terms of method and data are good and reliable. Uh, as a response, we have to approach the communication work in context of development planning in uh, public governance, integrating the communication work in city plans that has to ensure the participation the of the set of the assessors, meaning the and the wider public and those in between channels that facilitate the exchange. Uh, but at the end, uh, we could center as to how government units, in particular the local government, uh, be primary responsible eh, to ensure that risk is based on sound uh, assessments and making use of these assessments as material basis for the communication uh, materials and action points of the uh, city. Uh, just how to have a story to uh, review C2 policy state plan atom where development plans come in in terms of the communication work. So we have two main plans, as we all know, in the city, there is the six uh, comprehensive land use plan and the uh, development plans. And the two thematic plans, the local climate change action and the local disaster reduction management plan. Um, Maki, uh, slide, third slide, please. Uh, is intended, uh, is that are part of our derivative plans from the comprehensive land use plan and CDP and uh, NCDP. So, LCCAL is your uh, climate action, basically, uh, intended your capacity of people and the space to survive impacts. What Elgrim plan is a management plan. Uh, as discussed a while ago, it focuses on the prevention, uh, preparation, response, and recovery from specific disasters. Uh, when we say it's a management plan, it's a set of protocols, directives, uh, uh, approaches, strategies as to how we use uh, resources, funding, and even the capacity development strategy and the technology of the city. On both uh, plans, on both LCCAP and Belgrim plan, it is based on uh, risk assessments. Maki, next slide, please. So when we look on the planning process, uh, risk assessments serve as uh, a, a first step development of plans. It is when we characterize the current situation of our and sometimes we can perceive a uh, risk assessment as purely synthetic uh, scenario that is uh, disconnected with our current realities and uh, any uh, expected future. Uh, LCCAP is the climate change uh, action, uh, climate change act. And uh, basically, this is a this is uh, with a funding facility available for local government units, and there is under uh, utilization of this fund because uh, mababa yung pag uh, pagkuha ng local government units sa fund dahil yung risk assessment nila will is not uh, tell your own projects na pinapropose nila. They tend to propose usual projects, not based on the risk assessment. And uh, Eldrick plan, uh, as we all know, is an uh, appropriation on our IRA. And this automatic uh, appropriation is a, is provides uh, the sustainability of DRM work and the communication work included on our uh, Delivering plans. Um, the planning process are assessments, science based, evidence based, and data driven, as highly emphasized by Dr. Alampai on his uh, presentation. Next slide, please, Mahi. Um, as I said, uh, good climate communication is based on good risk assessment. 
uh, presenting a quick review of uh, risk assessment framework from the climate change with uh, the governmental panel of climate change on the assessment report. report. Uh, when we look on risk, uh, we look on uh, climate as kung paano nagbabago yung fall and temperature, uh, gano'n lumalakas o dumadalas ang mga malalakas na bagyo at mga sakuna, and how this is characterized. When we uh, when we characterize the hazards, tinitingnan natin hanggang saan ba yung baha, hanggang paaba, pewang ba, gano'n kataas ang storm surge, lampas ulo ba ito, at so, uh, ang yung bang mga barangay lang nakatabi ng dagat, yung bang mga uh, ito yung kung paano natin kinakaraktirize when we characterize the hazard uh, we also characterize the exposed units or what we call exposure ano yung karakteristik ng mga tao na nandoon sila ba yung uh, uh, sila ba yung uh, uh, economic strata ng ating society sila ba ay nandoon because of cultural reasons at ano rin yung katangian at kalagayan ng ating uh, natural and built environment. When we see the natural, syempre yan yung ating mga plants, mga uh, animals, uh, natural resources, water. When we see, ano naman yung kondisyon ng ating mga pinipilang bahay, ng ating dalsada, ng ating government uh, offices, ng ating government facilities. And when we say vulnerability, ito yung isa sa mga pinakamahalaga uh, aspect ng pagbuo natin ng risk. Kasi yung uh, sensitive, yung vulnerability, yun itong question of uh, kailan ba o papaano ba tayo maapektuhan. Yung po yung tinatawag natin na sensitivity. At ano rin yung kasalukuyan ng kapasidad ng ating mga komunikasyon ng ating, at ng ating mga uh, kapaligiran. Man yung tinatawag natin adaptive capacity. So yung sensitivity and adaptive capacity siya yung bumubuo noong uh, pagtatasa natin of uh, vulnerability. All then, sila yung magbibigay noong uh, information, noong knowledge kung ano yung level ng risk na meron tayo. At itong mga sa, sa public sphere, kung saan tinitingnan natin uh, bumabagal ba o bumibilis yung ekonomiya na ating city. At uh, ano yung mga projects na binubuo natin in terms of adaptation at nagkakaroon ba ng mga trabaho para, pagkaro para pag nagkaroon ng uh, bagyo at sakuna, may, may, meron tayong funds, meron tayong kita. At, at ano rin yung mga policies at ano rin yung mga efforts ng cities para makahanap ng investment to adaptive projects na kailangan natin. At... Uh, Yung, yung, yung proseso ng pagtingin natin sa development story ng ating city. Translate din yan doon sa kung paano natin ginagamit yung lupa, which is your comprehensive land use plan natin na tinatawag. So, ang CLUP, siya yung, ang land use, siya yung pinaka uh, pangunahing dahilan kung bakit tumataas yung greenhouse gas emission at kung bakit tayo nagkakaroon ng climate change at kung bakit tayo nagkakaroon ngayon ng mga mapitindi at malalakas na mga bagyo. So these are all, these, these are, ito yung web ng information na kailangan na maunawaan, ma-provide, at ma-integrate, at ma-i-contexto ng local government units para mabuo natin yung, yung risk, yung risk profile ng ating, uh, ng ating syudad. These principles uh, can be borrowed to do the health risk assessments of pandemics such as COVID. Ang um, difference lang dito, uh, hazard kasi uh, defined yung expanse, sa ang barangay, ganong kalawak yung lugar na yan, sino yung nandun. Para at pag tinitingnan natin yung, yung flood, yung storm surge, yung landslide. Pero pwede din natin uh, tingnan yung data natin on exposure, on vulnerability para matingnan natin ilang tao ba talaga yung kailangan natin uh, bigyan ng ayuda pa sino yung sino yung mga pamilya na hindi makaka-survive in the next uh, 3 months because uh, kulang ang walang trabaho pagkain
And then we ask now, uh, paano, pa, paano natin mabubuo yung, yung spatial expanse o yung boundary noong Hagari? Kasi ngayon, sa tinitingnan natin, uh, in terms of the pandemic, lahat tayo uh, pwedeng maging apektado dito. Hanggat hindi na ayaw testing at uh, contact tracing, lalo higit yan, hindi natin mapipin down as kung nasaan yung bound noong, uh, noong, noong problema. At uh, we have to be on the side, we have to really uh, beef up on the work on testing and contact tracing. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, papakita lang po ka ng ilang sample materials uh, for communication this from LCCAP and Albion Plan of, uh, uh, from Ormoc City. Uh, when you look on maps and graphs, bandage niya, uh, these are visual and spatial. Nakikita natin sa agad saang lugar, sino, saang barangay, ano yung gilang, uh, magagawa agad natin yung immediate comparison of uh, an identification of particular barangays. Pero um, naked, um, disadvantage naman ito. Minsan, this is very highly technical. Kaya natin ang po, ng color coding or uh, present natin yung graphs ng, uh, with very good uh, uh, comparative uh, sense. Nari, uh, hindi ito magbilis mauunawaan. Kaya kailangan i-extend yung contextualization. Bakit uh, itong lugar na to ay pero hindi siya, hindi mas, mas mababa yung risk niya kumpara dun sa isang barangay na katabi niya. Dahil, dahil ang diferensya siguro marahil ay yung socioeconomic capacity ng mga, anong mga naninirahan doon. So, uh, as local government staff uh, who conduct assessments, we have to be uh, reflexive dun sa, na, dun sa practice na ginagawa natin sa pagbuo ng technical assessments. Uh, yung mga sort of technical formalisms na tinatawag natin, kailangan natin siyang uh, tanggalin. Uh, hindi ibig sabihin, pag sinabi natin high risk, uh, all the lugar, hindi na sila dapat uh, tingnan. Wala na silang problema tungkol sa baha. Ang ibig sabihin lang siguro nito, uh, based on the technical uh, assessment natin, tools are available to us, uh, visually spreadsheets. Uh, yun yung computation natin. We really have to go down to look at the, to, to the people on the ground to validate and see their, uh, their, their, their stories, their insights. To, kung tama ba yung ginagawa natin ng assessment. Uh, the, the, the tools can, can be easily done uh, by planners, uh, by technical people of the government. Pero yung pagpapalalim at pagpala, pagpapalapag ng assessment natin doon na nangyayari nila, uh, maaaring hindi natin makapsur with that particular uh, so, uh, Yung forecast, forecast and bulletin, uh, these are data-driven and sometimes automated and they communicate uncertainty yung hanggang saan lang ba uh, valid yung ating yung ating uh, forecast so this this is also still very very technical and uh, sometimes yung pinanggagalingan ng datos nito uh, highly dependent kapag yung government units natin ay meron silang automated uh, weather station which is highly dependent on the supplier so, uh, if problems on the supplier side, baka hindi makapagbigay ng information ang local government unit uh, as needed and as immediately as possible. Uh, sa next slide, ito lang yung uh, screenshots ng Facebook ng Ormoc City as how they use uh, the uh, social media, uh, Facebook, usually, uh, yung as a platform doon sa pag-communicate nila ng COVID-19. So, na dito yung pinaka nagustuhan ko, eh, yung tama, yung nabilang yung kanina ni Karen, yung live feeds ng feeds. Yes, uh, it provides 
doon sa doon sa mga meetings mo on uh, the report on the expenses, on the cases, on the resolutions, uh, and their responses on the national directives. So makikita yung uh, nabubuo rin yung concept ng transparency sa kung paano uh, ginagamit ang pera at kung paano nag-aacto yung ating mga local government officials uh, in terms of uh, COVID-19. The page also uh, includes announcements. These are straightforward identification of programs or uh, nasan ba yung ating mga isolation centers, nasan ba yung ating mga hand washing stations, and these also include uh, policies. Dito yung sense of concrete action of government dahil uh, we know that in government, in local governance, um, yung concrete measure kaagad ng action is also institutionalized, provide uh, putting it on uh, legislation. So this shape the protocol system. This is a this is a, a, an opportunity for local government units to establish the protocol system of this pandemic. Because uh, on other disasters, alam ka agad natin kung kailan ito call yung yellow, uh, red warnings. But on pandemic, uh, na, it's a learning process uh, for for the local government units and. Uh, Maganda rin na yung platforms natin uh, mag-document sa mga responses ng, uh, ng government. So, it gives yung narrative ng action and uh, yung sinasabi nga kanina yung pagkakamat natin ng assurances from local government units. Uh, coming from Dr. Flores' uh, presentation, uh, it shows how social media is a promising really is a promising platform and uh challenge now i think is to uh traffic the, the consumers or the, the viewers to to our to our platform making it an authoritative source and on also on changing uh, i think on changing landscape of sort of media uh we get things directly on it's because from from virtual pressers of uh, DOH and Manakanyang. I think uh, this also made a change on how news agencies are, are or, uh, or, 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 or other organizations make uh, a, a look on the content of the news and how they have to process it and in terms of let's say counter checking of facts and claims of this uh virtual pressure so uh that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a caution uh, for the local government units and the and for us for some consumers of uh, media that uh we also look we should we should also look we should also be critical on this uh particular uh feeds on the next slide, uh, in the next few slides, I will be uh, uh, proposing some recommendation as to how we, uh, in terms of operationalization and approach, and on particular on COVID-19. Uh, what first, my first recommendation is to establish plans. If I have said these are the CLUP, CDP, the LC government plan to include the risk communication work. Uh, I think the all the issue uh, we should get away one of the work and we should establish a long term communication plan that contextualize contribute to the local development goals of the city. Uh, yung yung pag yung pag communicate natin ng risk assessments are not palaging hindi siya palaging necessary uh, to alarm or to inform, but also to solicit actions and to provide enlightenment back it with this assessment we also have this policy or uh, let's say uh, kapag mataas yung pagulan bakit nagkakaroon na yun ng policy or in, on capturing water as to uh, police it action na it treat yung increase of water as additional resource for the community and identify the talents and the technology technology Sabi nga kanina, not all local government units can actually hire a uh, 
a communication professional. And, and kasama, dapat kasama ito doon sa ating mga, uh, sa ating parenting plan at sa ating usapan para ma-sustain natin yung, yung communication work. Hindi lang sa pagkatapos na yung plano, nagawa na ng tarpulina, ibigay niyo yung mapa sa barangay, tapos na siya. So kailangan, we can also look on how we can maximize the public information office na meron tayo. Then develop a good database. Babalik ulit ako, a good risk communication is based on a robust risk assessment. So kapag mabilis sa atin yung uh, kapag meron tayong datos at uh, sustenido yung pag-update natin ito, pagkuha ng uh, kalagayan ng ating mga mabilis sa atin na at mag-implement ng projects. Kali natin matutukoy who are the target audit, uh, who are the target uh, beneficiaries of our actions on ground. And um, approach, uh, kanin, uh, tulad ng mga nabanggit kanina, there's always a need to contextualize our risk assessment. Uh, yung, isang, yung isang map, let's say the risk map, or a infographic na may number of uh, positive and negative cases, hindi na necessarily picture na ang ng kalahatan. So, uh, provide a context bakit yun lang yung nilalabas natin, saan siya nang galing, ano pa yung dapat natin tingnan para mag-make sense pa yung ating risk maps or yung ating infographics. And employ participative method. Sa simula sa simula pa lang ng pagbuo natin ng assessments na uh, participative method na kagad. Uh, uh, yung, particip yung participation ng community, it gives you a sense of valid yung ginagamit mong datos kasi nanggaling sa kanila yan. And may uptake and ownership yung community doon sa ginagawang assessment. Otherwise, uh, uh, pag ibinalik natin yan sa kanila, yung maps, yung program, ads, uh, baka hindi nila baka hindi nila tanggapin. So, sa simula sa simula pa lang, kailangan natin yan uh, ilapit sa kanila. Kailangan kasama na sila doon. Then, discuss the limitations also of your information na ibinig na ibinigbigay natin. And uh, ngayon, sa so nangyayari ngayon na uh, gamit na gamit yung social media, uh, kailangan natin mag-facilitate ng public discourse. Ano yung Kagari, may, may issue sa isang city na tatanggap ba sila o hindi ng LSIs when it's mandated now to local government to accept. So yung mga ganitong uh, diskurso, yung mga ganitong public opinion, kailangan itong uh, makapture at maging at maisama doon sa, doon sa, doon sa, doon sa ginagamit nating channel ng develop, ng develop ng ng communication. So we take communication as a sustainability strategy. So parang kapag pag sinabi natin sustainability strategy, paano natin mai-ensure na all the time uh, ma ma maintain natin yung pag-capture ng data at pagbalik dito sa kanila. So kailangan natin sa uh, tingnan din sa ganoong para at for COVID-19, uh, uh, understand, halos lahat ng local government units ngayon naglabas ng kanilang mga uh, ordinances, particular on protocols. We have to uh, institutionalize or codify this and include this on your DRRM protocols. So whenever uh, the same condition, the same, of the same nature, uh, madali itong ma-activate ng local chief executive and yung mga budgets natin are, are there. Are, then increase the expertise, the local expertise for us to gain authority. Um, kailangan dito rin, kailangan pwede, baka pwede rin natin itap yung mga experts natin na hindi part ng government and are there to can, who can uh, translate uh, our communication materials, who can translate the technical formalisms na meron doon sa ating mga communication uh, materials. And consider the public concern on management. Uh, although we are advocating that uh, 
have to institutionalize these protocols. You also have to review if these protocols are just an option of national directing or uh, or ano yung mga enhancements na pwede natin idagdag dito based on the say kung paano tinitingnan ng, ng public how a health emergency should be managed. So, kailangan yan sa pag sa pag-institutionalize ng ating mga protocols. I think uh, po, uh, that's the end of my input. Maraming salamat. Okay, uh, maraming salamat po, ano, uh, Sir Ben. So, it's a good thing na contextualize natin yung uh, risk crisis communication within the overall um, local planning process at the same time yung buong DRR strategy for uh, local government units. So, I think now we can proceed sa ating open forum. Okay, so before that, um, another round of picture taking lang po muna before we proceed to open forum. So please turn your cameras on. Yeah. Okay, maraming salamat po. Um, so, balik ko lang sa screen. Ayan, so sa open forum, balikan lang po natin yung magiging mechanics natin. No? Um, so again, uh, mag-accommodate mag tayo ng questions from those na mag-raise ng hand or yung mga nag-type na ng questions nila or magta-type pala ng questions nila or comments sa ating chat box. Again, please state or include your full name, LG organization, and to whom your question or comment is directed to. And... If marami po tayong com questions or comments, uh, baka hindi natin ma-accommodate ma lahat, but we will forward your question or comment na lang sa ating uh, resource speakers um, after the webinar so they can respond to you via email uh, later. So, um, meron na po nag hand. Okay, so uh, si Sir Eugene po, Pente po, i-unmute ko po kayo and then um, again, state your uh, uh, LG organization then and to whom your question or comment is directed to. Okay. Yeah, hello, good evening. Uh, good morning. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes, hello. Kanina po, sir. Hello. Oh, yes, sir. Okay po, narinig niyo po ako? Yes, sir. Narinig po. Anyway, uh, Eugene from Santa Cruz. Yes. I, I'm Eugene from uh, Municipality of Santa Cruz under the Office of the Vice Mayor. So, researcher po ako. And right now, I would like to ask anyone, uh, kung meron po tayong available na um, facilities or uh, sabi natin na, kasi ang ang internet lang yan kapag may kuryente kahit, kahit radio television ganun din ang mangyayari pag may kuryente what if total blackout ang nangyari during uh, a disaster so meron ba tayong satellite na pwedeng magamit hello okay sir kanina nyo po gusto ano, or to anyone po Anyone po, uh, uh, kung sino pwede makasagot. Kasi uh, yung, yung pinag-uusapan natin, kasi kapag may kuryente lang yan, eh paano kung totak ang nangyari? Okay, alternative aid ng, ano, ng, uh, ng national government. Okay, sir. Sige po. Uh, maybe anyone from our research speakers. So may satellite ba na pwede tayo may... Sagutin ko na lang po. Yung 
Sige po. Usually po, parang yung iba't ibang system. Gawin ko na lang po in, in general. Ha. So, kunyari, miski po, po ang ang opisina. Kunyari, business process outsourcing. Usually, you have what you call redundant system. Ibig sabihin, kung may internet okay. access yung, ano, may multiple service providers. Yung sinasabi niyo pong bawalan mm-hmm. ng kuryente, meron po mga devices, they don't need electricity. What they need is batteries. Or they need solar panels. Okay. Or kunyari, meron mga satellite phones. So, posibleng, you, you'd have you'd have satellite phones. Kunyari, yung nangyari yung Yolanda, tanda ko, uh, yung DOSC nagpahiram ng mga satellite phones para gumana, nakakapagpadala, okay. na, nakakatawag. Yung radyo po, kahit po walang kuryente sa lugar, naabot po yan ng signals. Kasi po yung signals nga ng radyo, mas mala, kanyari AM lalo na, mas malayo po yung naabot. Okay. So doon ko po, yung, yun po yung sinasabi ko na merong iba't iba, or, or yung binigay na example ni Karen, yung community radio, meron po mga, uh, mga grupo, yung mga two-way radio yung ginagamit nila. Okay? Okay. So hopefully po naman, uh, kadalasan pag may disaster, meron pong lag, siguro ilang araw lang mawawala yan. So doon sa time na mawala yan, ang unang trabaho ng gobyerno is to activate all those things, electricity, water, utilities, telephone communication. In the interim, doon pumapasok yung temporary communication system that you have to consider. Kaya, ay, ay, kaya pumapasok pa rin yung ibang pamamaraan for communicating. Okay. Salamat po. Baka po yung iba po nating uh, resource makers or si Sir Ben. You have Ms. Karen, uh, Dr. Flores, meron po kayong um, gustong idagdag? Uh, ako, Maki, sa experience lang kasi, I can't answer for the national government, syempre. Pero sa experience ko kasi sa Yolanda nga, ayun, nangyari yon walang kuryente, walang signal. Uh, radio lang talaga yung sa pinaka-effective. Pero yun, may ilang days na wala talaga. Pero merong na-activate na clusters. So, meron kaming focus sa water and sanitation. Meron for, ano, for ICT. So, yun, nag-work uh, together. Hindi lang yung local government national government then and then new agencies para magkaroon ng signal for radio and then yun yung basic uh, source ng information during that time since wala talagang kuryente and signal. Okay. okay. Oh. Thank you po, uh, Sir Eugene. Salamat po. So, uh, meron po tayong question no, from uh, yung sa chat box natin. Uh, medyo same team naman sila from Mr. Uh, uh, Ares Gutierrez of LGU ng Quezon City and Ms. Uh, Thea Aranet of UPLB. Parang they're asking about if meron po bang uh, communication plan or communication guideline uh, from the national government. Uh, for example, in the use of social media. Um, uh, I think tapag-usapan din po namin nata ito ni Sir Sir Ben, before the webinar, no, on available guidelines for uh, on how LGUs can communicate. So maybe Sir Ben would like to start. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, in terms of communication planning, uh, this will be for the for agency. And um, the communication plan is about how to make how to find a way to communicate from that side. Yeah. So, the uh, uh, DOH will be the RR and for that. And they have, they're supposed to provide a communication plan, uh, guidance on how to build a communication plan for that. I'm not sure if it's already available sa ating mga local corporates. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, yung, 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 yung protocols and uh, and the uh, communications, pwede siyang buhukin din ng local government teams. Pwede nilang isama yan as part of their uh, process ng disaster. So, yun. Okay. Uh, uh, baka po yung iba dating user speakers, are you aware of any communication plan or guidelines issued by the national government? So, um, Ako, wala po kung wala po akong alam na national guidelines on social media use kasi i think every local government naman may, ma, depende naman yung gamit niyan eh. pero pag 
pag when you talk about COVID or health information, sa akin lang ha, personal uh, opinion ko lang, dapat the messaging should be clear kung saan hinuhugot or saan ang gagaling. And then the local government units can just re-echo it. So kunyari in the States, if there's a CDC or in the Philippines, merong DOH na guideline. Dapat consistent. So merong DOH guidelines, ibababa ng local government unit. So the, the, the communication plan lang is how to get the policy down to the local government level. It, hindi naman kailangan gumawa pa ng mga bagong protocols on policies yung local government level kung klaro from the outset what the protocol is by the DOH. Ganun lang naman yan. Hindi pwedeng kung saan-saan pa tayo maghahanap. Kasi to be, if you are in government, the, expect, the expectation of people is that your message is reliable. Mahirap na kung yung message or yung information ng gobyerno ay eh, pinagdududahan. Diba? So dapat, alam mo kung saan kukunin yung data or yung information and then dapat consistent lahat ng local government unit kung ito yung message ng national government or ng DOH, dapat hindi tayo tataliwas dun sa messaging na binibigay ng gobyerno. Thank you, Sir Erwin. Um, um, next po na magtatanong natin, marami naman sa nag-raise uh, ng hand din, si uh, Sir Leonardo Morales. Hello, Sir. Hello. Um, magandang hapon sa lahat. Opo. Hello, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Leonardo Morales, uh, counselor from Kanaman, LGU Kanaman, Camarines Sur. Um, a question ko lang, kahit sino sir, pwede sumagot. Um, uh, dapat ba, in, in, sa perspective kasi ng, ano, ng counselor, uh, mas maganda ba na ini-institutionalize namin yung about sa information uh, dissemination through ordinance. Kaya sa amin kasi, ako, uh, author ako ng new, new normal ordinance, April pa lang meron na kami. So, bago pa lumabas yung mga sinasabi na wearing of mask at lahat na yun, ginawa na namin. Pero kasi, minsan napapansin ko, yung implementation kasi, no, no, lalo na pagdating sa implementation, may, medyo humihina siya. Pero ngayon, medyo marami na talaga kami nahukuli ng wearing of mask. So, ang ano ko lang naman dun is, dapat ba talaga na institutionalize yung mga bagay na yan? Especially when it comes to IEC and inform, information dissemination. Lalo ngayong panahon ng COVID. Ano po? Thanks. So, uh, any uh, yes, sir. Yes, um, sir, Flores. Um, Better siguro na ma-institutionalize din yan, pero not necessarily when we say institutionalizing, it's not just um, crafting a policy if there is already a, a, an existing policy. Like for example, we have now the RA10121. Ang, 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 ang dapat lang siguro is how can we execute that better and then later on uh, include that in the local DRM plan in which paano, paano ka, mag, paano ka mag, mag be build ng possible na activities based on, for example, sa forecast or advanced data, simulation data, for example, in the case of COVID-19, ano yung, yung mga local transmission possibilities. So, dyan ka na mag activate So, siguro, uh, it's more on how would you uh, restructure the, the the local DRM council. And, of course, maybe pwede, pwede maka-add ka ng certain policy, local or, uh, ordinances related to that. But it's not um, merely... Uh, ordinance, but how will you activate? Kailan ka mag-respond? Siguro may local protocol na kailangan natin um, i-observe uh, rather than uh, cre uh, creating just a policy. Saan siya dapat maging existing uh, activity or program or certain project of the local government? Kasi pag, pag sinabi natin na mag-create lang tayo ng policy, then maybe may problem sa implementation as mentioned siguro nagkaka-problema sa implementation kasi hindi siya naglilink doon sa organization na, na nag-implement. Like for example, our, our local DRM council, saan siya dapat ma-integrate? Kailan siya dapat, si, sino mag-execute better? Tapos, uh, at what time siya dapat i-execute ang certain, poly, ang, ang, ang certain activity? Kaninong mandate to? Tapos, sino yung mga, mga, mga departments sa, sa local government na dapat mag-usap-usap? Kasi it's it, it's not in 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 particular 
um, department lang siya. Eh. For example, health. Health siguro kasi uh, ano siya, uh, public health crisis in the case of COVID-19. But there are other uh, areas in governance na may, may room siyang implication. So, nandun si social welfare, nandun din si si uh, agri- uh, maybe nandun din si the agriculture for example kasi hindi siya maka, maka, hindi sila makakain in, in 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 that case wala silang access kasi may may ECQ na ini-implement then uh and and all other um departments ng local government unit so um maybe uh, trying to, to strengthen lang anong nag exist na policy not entirely creating a, a particular policy sa local level it's more on how will we integrate existing Uh, ordinances that that we have para ma-carry out, ma-execute ng maayos kung anong meron tayo. Kasi I, I have read that, that there is a, a, a study or evaluation done by by some uh, researchers together with or uh, initiated, initiated by the De La Salle University na, na uh, anong Governance Institute na of course we, we, have, we have now policies in place in, in terms of uh, responses to disaster that may include also kung, kung gagamitin lang natin, pwede natin ma-adapt sa COVID responses. Ang, ang kulang is how, how creative are we in terms of, of contextualizing the existing policies, the existing activities that we have been conducting even before. Thank you. Sagutin ko lang din. Ah, parang sa akin merong, merong pang layers yung question mo eh. Kasi sabi mo, kailangan ba ng ordinance? Of course, kailangan ng ordinance kasi parang gusto mo masustain to para kung mangyari uli, meron ka ng uh, batas na pagbabatihan. Pero mes- medyo na-concern lang ako dun sa aspect na sinabi mo, may ordinance na nga, marami pa rin na kong nahuhuli. So, consistent lang dun sa, sa topic natin, which is communication. Ang tanong dito is, kung may ordinance ka, na-communicate mo bang maigi kung ano yung gusto mong mangyari? Kasi hindi naman necessarily kailangan na hulihin. Kasi dapat isipin mo, ano ba yung objective? Bakit tayo nagma-mask wearing? Bakit tayo nagso-social distance? Bakit tayo nag-ECQ? So important prior to the ordinance is actually understanding what's the objective and also understanding what's our standard of effectiveness. Kung may mahuli ka, tapos nalaman mo, eh hindi nila alam yung ordinance. Then the problem is communication. Then the then would apprehension actually solve the problem? So feeling ko hindi lang yan a matter of o gagawat ng ordinance, but also thinking of whether the ordinance is consistent with what you want to do, consistent with your objectives, or will your penalties actually make it worse? Kasi marami, marami ako nakikita ng mga examples na implementation ng ordinance, kinukulong yung mga tao, tapos lalo silang, the mere fact na kinulong mo, already violates the spirit of the ordinance, which is social distancing and yung ganon. Parang you also have to think of how do I communicate it effectively, just to be consistent lang with, with the topic we're talking about. Okay, thank you, Sir Erwin. I think, Sir... Baka si Sir Ben, you, have also, you also have an input para dito kasi you were talking about institutionalizing uh, communication, integrating it with yung local planning process or sa mga uh, sa development plans. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, sabihin ito, uh, when we codify responses for COVID-19, uh, provide the policy level kapag nangyari ito sa team shoulder or ito yung basis natin ng na implementing projects uh, hanggat na dito hanggat na hanggat na sa ilalim pa rin tayo ng uh, COVID-19 regime at uh, pag, pag may violators on the ordinances there's a disconnect on kung paano natin sa uh, communicate and it's not only communicating yung mismo coordinates paano rin yung other platforms ng government ay nagamit para kasi yung galing pa rin yung 
sa nangyayari ka lang sa labas. So kung paano po ay yung city health office mo or your task force mo for COVID ay nagdadagdag ng discussion and uh, inputs doon sa para kasi on uh, using your uh, face mask. Pa- paano nila effectively na pag-communicate so uh, with this minimum health standards we can definitely be impossible to go back on tracking the, the virus. Ayan po. And uh, nandito din dito is any other ordinance are compelled to put uh, budget when it's activated and it's possible. So, so hindi, hindi magtatagay yung response dahil meron tayo o uh, bakit na bakit nagdala yung itong data na ito. Thank you. Thank you po, uh, Sir Ben. Uh, meron po tayong question from Ms. Sheridan Atina Gahete of the National Youth Commission. Uh, what are the criteria daw po if there is such in determining effective risk or crisis uh, management to? Pero I think maybe she means communication. Ano daw po yung criteria kaya para masabi na effective ang um, risk or crisis communication? Hello, Maki. Sige. Yes, yes Pero po. Pero lang din. Uh, wala naman fix tayo yung criteria, no? Kaya gaya nung sinabi ko kanina, one size does not fit all. So, magdadepende tayo sa actual needs din nung community. Tsaka yung resources din na meron yung LGUs. Kasi kung ang dami mong plano, tapos hindi rin naman feasible for, for the community or sa LGU mismo, parang sayang lang din yung effort mo. So, para sa akin, ano... Ayun, uh, kailangan talagang tutukan no, yung pag-assess ng communication needs ng community. And then, make sure na clear yung sa messaging. Kasi ako personally, ah, uh, hindi naman against government. Pero uh, sobrang frustrated din ako na ang dami-daming jargons, ang daming acronyms. Hindi ko na maintindihan ano ba yung PUMs, uh, ano na ba yung MECQ, ECQ. Pag ang dami-dami na nakaka-overwhelm na nakaka-create na siya, nakaka-cause na siya ng anxiety. I imagine kahit sa level namin, siguro lalo na sa iba na hindi talaga aware yung ano, hindi aware sa difference ng mga yun. So for me, sa experience, usually may pre-testing tayo. Sinabi ko kanina sa chat, if possible, i-pre-test nyo yung mga communication materials nyo. Kasi kung ano yung understandable para sa atin, may not be understandable para sa iba. So yon since ano tagi LGU naman tayo mas kilala natin yung sa community mas okay din na ipacheck for example sa ilang individuals or kasama natin sa office na naintindihan niyo ba to at first glance si mga ganun may pre-testing tayo usually sa paggawa ng communication material so kung kaya naman ng LGUs natin baka pwede rin natin yung i-apply so walang definite na criteria para sa ano para sa akin na sa risk comes kasi iba-iba tayo ng needs per LGU Thank you. Ako, ako ay sa ano lang. Uh, I, 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 I support what Karen Karen said, but it's, it doesn't actually start start stop with piloting. I mean, kahit na roll out mo na yan, the important thing is to iterate, to keep on improving. So basta meron kang roll out na service, mino monitor mo pa rin yan. So the feedback is meant for you to implement it better. Like yung yung palengke ko nyari sa pasig na sinabi na biglang nagdagsaan yung mga tao tapos biglang naisipan na isip na ano o, gawin natin color coding or every may, may merong batch na pupunta from one barangay on a certain day so that's an example of iterating pero hindi mo malalaman yon unless mino monitor mo yon or unless you get feedback and i guess that's where uh, social media is very helpful because uh in social media, they give feedback on, oops, mali yata itong diagram na ito. Ah. Oops, mali pala itong data nyo. Bakit mag-iba yung data? Bakit hindi consistent? So doon, in a way, it's also important to listen, get feedback, get data on the ground. Kasi hindi naman one, hindi naman makukuha mo yung communication plan mo in one go. Eh. The, the idea is you keep on improving it okay, along the way. Uh, also, hindi ako agree sa papalit-palit ng definition <laughs> ng, ng, ng certain cases kasi parang nagugulo lang yung mga tao. Pero the idea is, hindi mo necessarily makukuha yung communications plan 
perfectly, but you the expectation is you should always improve on it by monitoring how it's being implemented. Okay, sir. Thank you po. Um, I think meron po tayong... Si Sir Flores po ba? Meron kayo dadagdag? Oh. Um, in, 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 in our case, um, siguro, um, I, I, I agree with, with Ma'am Karen and Sir Alam pa as well. Uh, masasabi lang natin siguro na maging effective yung, yung risk communication ng isang LGU if, uh, una nga, tama, sinabi nila na dapat clear. Para sa akin siguro, pag na-translate na into practice, ng ng public ng community kung ano yung gustong ipahiwati ng ng local government unit na anong dapat gawin in order to protect themselves from from danger yun siguro na for example may isang executive order ang isang executive tapos uh, wala nang masyadong maraming tanungan among the public kung anong ibig sabihin ng ng executive order na yun ano ba yung protocols na yun uh, wala nang gray areas para sa kanila wala nang agam-agam kung ano pang dapat gawin. Kasi may mga executive orders, uh, uh, though the professionals na nakaka, naka, nakakaintindi because generally ang working language natin is English. So kahit nga professionals, minsan hindi sila naiintindihan ano talaga yung ibig sabihin, ano yung, yung, yung gustong ipaliwatig ng, ng, ng executive order na ini-issue. So kung, kung sa level ng professionals, hindi nila masyadong ma- Ma- maintindihan ano ang, ang gustong ipapagawa sa kanila, ano yung limitations, ano yung impose na dapat, kailan, at, at anong dapat behavior na nagkagawin. Na Much more na hindi siya maintindihan ng mga tao sa baba. So sometimes siguro, uh, hindi masyado vague, dapat direct, tsaka of course, klaro ang, ang, ang mga sinasabi ng mga ordinances na to, uh, ng mga uh, executive orders na to or other communication coming from the LGUs. Kasi uh, kung nag-respond yung tao sa kung ano, directly, kung ano yung, dinag- yung ipapagawa sa anong LGU, uh, we can infer na, na effective siya. So there are other ways, as mentioned earlier, kung paano natin gawin effective. Um, there are other ways and tools, pero siguro mag, mag, mag-zero in siguro tayo dito sa if nag-respond na wala na masyadong uh, agam-agam yung tao kung anong gagawin, wala na masyadong tanong na napapractice nila agad, na intindihan nila, na wala nang ng tanungan, questions and, and sa, sa iba nilang mga kaibigan, kakilala, na maintindihan natin na siguro sa, sa mga tao sa baba, ma, ma, maintindihan nila ma, ng, ng mabuti. Pero kung sa, sa mga among professionals pa lamang, hindi na, sila, hindi na nila maintindihan ang ibig sabihin na, na pinapagawa ng LGU. So, much more dun sa mga tao na nandun sa baba. So, siguro, klaro, tsaka uh, um, easier to to understand ang ang communication nila tapos avoid na tayo sa the jargon tapos if ever hindi talaga ma-eliminate na kasi kailangan natin na English ang working language siguro up at the time na ini-issue yung yung communication in in English may may follow up na explanation coming from LGs ano ba talagang ibig sabihin ng mga ganitong issuances yun lang okay po maraming salamat po uh, sir Flores um i think may I was informed na si Mr. Ares daw po uh, would like to share then. Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Ah, para ano lang, no? meron na kasi yung, ano, yung, yung question is kung kailangan bang magkaroon ng ordinance, local ordinance, para ma-institutionalize yung communications. Actually, nasa local government code na may provision talaga doon na isa sa role ng, P- ng LGU PIO is to be on top of uh, communicating disaster, sa disasters, no? disaster information dissemination. Merong specific provision doon. Uh, through the years, ang naging problema, hindi siya nakaskade. Hindi siya nakaskade for some reason na hindi namin din maintindihan. Kasi we... We made a study on that sa Philippine Public Safety College. Maraming LGUs, hindi nila alam na meron palang role yung PIO na ganun. Specific role na dapat ginampanan. Kaso ang pagkakasulat lang ng provision is more on hydromet uh, incidents. So siguro kung magkakaroon lang amendment na ipapasok sa local government code, yung provision na yun gawing all hazards. 
para included na rin tong mga pandemic na to. And then, yun nga, yung, yung may tanong ako kanina sa chat, uh, kung inamin na ba ng DOH wala silang risk communications plan? Kasi as far back as 2018, we've been asking DOH to help us do sa capability development program namin sa Quezon City. Kasi balak namin no, na talagang magkaroon ng localized na risk communications plan, specifically in public health, uh, public health concerns. Kasi at that time, may mga uh, bago yung COVID, merong mga ibang ano eh, uh, may mga meningo coxemia na scare, may ano-ano pa, ano, yun, may SARS pa nga noon. Gusto sana namin magkaroon ng localized na risk public health risk communications plan. But when we ask the DOH for help, wala silang masabi sa amin. So kaya ito ngayon, yung yung kakulangan ng DOH, tayo ngayon na nagsasuffer ngayong pandemic kasi wala tayong sinusunod na plan. Yun lang, thank you po. Okay po, maraming salamat po uh, Sir Ares. Um maybe some of our resource speakers would like to um, add to what Sir Ares said or uh, react to it. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, yung yung natin kanina, kailangan natin ma-maximize yung uh, capacity training ng tayo sa mga PDLAs. That's why, uh, uh, in terms of pagbuo pa ng plan, pagbuo pa lang ng risk information, PDI kung may uh, officer must be there, must be part of the planning team or the assessment team para when the uh, when the information has to be communicated to people, uh, alam niya kung paano ay translate uh, properly na maintindihan nito ng ng public. Uh, I cannot answer as to how this to do in so many uh, uh, providing a communication plan uh, guidance. Uh, but uh, from what I know, I took the kasama yun sa mga at nila sa mga plan nila na isasap na ilalabas kasama ng guidelines nila sa pag-build ng ERRN for health. Sige po. Salamat po, Sir Ben. Um, may question po tayo from the chat box. Um, from Ms. Mary Grace Reyes, uh, what are effective ways daw po to prevent the spread of fake news? Oh, for me, ano, kaya kailangan ng consistent monitoring din kung ano yung meron tayong communications channels. Tapos usually naman sa Facebook yan, eh, no? kaya okay na may nakabantay tayo sa Facebook page natin. Tapos sagutin agad. Or kung yung kumalat na fake news ay hindi sa social media or around the community lang, Usually, yung ibang LG, yung naglalabas agad ng statement para kontrahin yung fake news. So, dapat, uh, ayun, alert din yung LG news natin para i-counter agad kung ano may yung kumakalat ng fake news. Thank you. Maybe say, uh, yung iba po, meron din po yung insights on how you think LG news can uh, control the spread of fake news. Hindi lang yung spread ng uh, virus po, pati fake news, kailangan na rin i-control. So, Maybe Sir Irwin po uh, would like to uh, give his insights. Well, pag fake news naman, I think the long long term solution there is education. Um, kasi ang, 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 ang kalaban mo naman ang, na issue with fake news is who's going to say which one is fake, diba? And then you might end up uh, getting to the problem of censorship. Diba? Parang, kunyari, sa Amerika nga, yung presidente nagli-label ng ibang mga bagay na fake news. Eh. So, yung isang issue mo dyan is who's going to label what is fake and what is uh, real. And yung sinasabi ko kanina na importante na, mawala, na hindi mawala ng trust ang mga citizens at the very least on government information na what local government puts out, what national government puts out, importante na before they put it out, they're assured that it is 
correct and real. Ang nagiging problema natin ngayon is paminsan nakakakita tayo ng mga hindi tamang mga data or information na nilalagay ng gobyerno. Ayun yung gusto natin maiwasan. Kasi as far as educate, especially when you talk about disasters, I think one of the first things that we ha- want to make people do is una mong takbuhan is pag-asa, una mong takbuhan is DOH to get information. Huwag ka na pupunta sa iba pa. And I think that's the, siguro one of, one of the best strategies is actually to point them to places where you know the data is reliable. Kasi kung mahirap, mahirap pag magtukoy pag minsan, eh, miski, miski ako pag minsan, napapaisip pa ako and I have to find the source. Di ba? Parang kailang maturuan sila how to find the correct source. Uh, if we want to stick to our topic of disaster information, I mean, it's a matter of pointing them to sino ba yung reliable sources and start from there. Thank you po, Sir Erwin. Uh, meron po tayo nag-raise ng hands si Ms. Jemery uh, Lanson. Hello po. Yes, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon po. Yes, this is Jemery Lanson from General Santa City, Project Development Officer po ng Sangayang Panasa dito. May, may ano lang po sana ako, erase na concern. Kasi we are talking about public trust po, di ba, in terms of communication. So I think part po po siya ng ano, public trust. Kasi there is a certain official dito po sa city namin who violated ano, a certain health protocol, specifically sa mga LSI. And then, it, kasi po, pinalabas po siya in, kasi nga po dahil po sa humanitarian reason. And then, it turned out that this LSI, nagpositive po siya sa kanyang rapid test. Kasi pinalabas po siya kasi pumunta po siya sa lamay ng kanyang nanay. So, ang nangyari, nagpositive siya. So, may nagkaroon po ng ano, public unrest kasi takot na magkaroon, magkaroon dito ng local transmission da- dahil po sa decision ng certain officials na yun. So, my question is, kasi nga nagkaroon na ng outrage ang public, paano siya i-medicate or how to medicate the outrage of the public in order to rebuild the public trust in terms of communication? Kasi nga, sila yung lawmaker, sila rin yung parang, kumbaga, na violate ang kanilang sariling batas. Okay, maraming. Apa, thank you. So, uh, any of our speakers can answer. Uh, so, paano daw po ma-address uh, yung outrage ng tao dahil merong uh, public official sa kanilang LGU na nag-violate ng protocols? So, I think very timely itong ano, kasi marami po atang ganyan ngayon ano, na government official. Mismo yung nag-violate ng protocols. Okay. So, uh, anyone from our uh, speakers? Sige na nga ako na nga lang. <laughs> <laughs> ayun, 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 ayun nga rin yung point ko eh. I mean, uh, as public officials, di ba, sinasabi sa code of conduct, it's a public trust. And importante na pangalagaan nga natin yung tiwala sa atin. Kasi pag mawala yung tiwala sa atin, then mawawala yung tiwala dun sa mga bagay na sinasabi natin. Um, mahirap kasi yung example na binigay mo, naglabag nga dun sa, dun sa, sa batas na supposedly ni-implement nila eh. And mahirap nga bawiin yung... I, I mean, it, it's something that's hard to regain eh. Mahirap. Kumbaga, ma, ma, mas madali. Parang customer lang yan eh. Na it's better to keep a good customer rather than to find new ones. Kasi, kaya, kaya importante nga na the way we behave, we follow the... the alam, alam ko hindi ko sinasagot yung, yung exactly yung, yung tanong mo. Pero ayun yung importance ng keeping the public trust. Ay implementing the laws equally, especially, most especially among government officials. Baka po meron tayong insight from Skaren, Dr. Flores, or Sir Ben. 
uh, para daw po ma-address ang outrage ng tao yung galit nila. Siguro, sa perspective nyo rin po, um, ano yung gusto nyo makita kaya na sa, from, from yung LGU statement, I guess? Um, Gener- generally, uh, ano eh, sa, sa, sa panahon ngayon, ma- mahirap talaga i-win back ang, ang trust ng taong bayan. Particularly if uh, yung violator is a public official. Um, siguro it's it's um, on how the 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 com- communicator coming from the local government w- would would address the concern particularly ano na yung ginawa sa local government uh, official na nagviolate uh, na, na there's something naman na ginawa sa kanila kasi pag wala mahirap talagang ano eh, kasi like for example in social media madali siyang kumalat madali siyang i-share So siguro if may something na nagginawa uh, doon sa violator uh, siguro mas ma, ma kahit pa paano ma lessen yung yung anger or yung yung pagkadismaya ng tao doon sa violator or sa implementer na din na hindi niya in, hindi nila inimplement equally among those uh, subjects ng 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 particular policy for example in the case of uh, community quarantine doon sa mga Uh, exposed na individuals kasama na doon local government officials. So siguro pa, paano na lang nila ipapakita na paano siya if not entirely sanctioned ano yung ginawa doon sa tao kaysa hinayaan na lang kasi uh, mabilis kumalat yung information uh, sa public na na particularly if uh, yung violator means is local government official. So mahirap siya i- i-win back in trust unless wala kang ginawang something doon sa violator. Kasi mahirap mo silang mapasunod if hindi mo man lang ginawa ng example or wala kang ang, kas, wala kang ginawa doon sa isang public uh, uh, official sa sa mga mga violations niya. I think si Ms. Karen, meron po ba? Oh, baka kasi ano nga sabi ko. <laughs> <laughs> no, hindi kasi uso sa atin yung nag-resign eh, no? kapag may nagawang mali. Anyway, ano lang, perspective lang din. Kung ako yung situ- constituent, tapos yung leader ko kasi ganun, ang sa tingin ko, ang first step talaga kasi is i-acknowledge na may maling ginawa na hindi usually nangyayari sa atin. No? Kasi sa etong mga previews, parang sila pa yung galit kung sino yung nag-violate. So yun, yung first kasi yung pagtanggap na may mali kang nagawa and then yung pag, uh, ano din, pag-assure sa constituents na hindi mo nauulitin yung ginawa tapos walk the talk. Ayun. Eh, yung napansin ko na ano eh, hindi lang sa experience nila dyan yung kanina na nag-share kanina. Sa ano din, di ba, sa national government, parang kung sino pa yung mali, sila pa yung usually arrogant. Instead of ano accepting na ano na may nagawa silang against the the rules and regulations. Yun lang. Maraming okay. salamat po. Uh, meron na lang po tayong uh, 440 na. So, meron na po tayong question actually from Uh, some of our researchers in CLR Gino. Tingin nyo ba daw po magkaiba dapat ang com strategy for an incident disaster like typhoon or earthquake, earthquake compared sa emerging or creeping disaster like climate change or pandemic? So magkaiba daw ba po ba dapat yung strategy dyan? Pag-communicate ng risk or anong threat? Okay. Sa akin, ano, sa akin na. Mas sa communication channels ako nagpo-focus ha. Kasi yun din yung isa kong ano din, naisip before, yung frustration ko din na, bawa, yung LGU, hindi ko sure kung meron sa amin sa Laguna na ito yung comms plan pag ano, ito yung nangyari. Kasi hindi ko alam ano ba yung totoong risk na meron dun sa area namin doon. Siguro yun, uh, i-identify din ng LGUs, ano yung ba yung risk or yun, anong disaster yung pwede mangyari sa area nyo. Kasi kung ano yung pwede mangyari sa Manila, pwede hindi naman applicable sa, ano, sa ibang area sa Philippines. So para sa akin, kailangan natin i-customize din yung comms plan per disaster. Given na disaster prone nga ang Philippines, sana ano, may ganun tayo. Hindi ko sure kung may ganun ang document sa LG. Hindi ako familiar kung meron. Pero para sa akin, bawat disaster dapat uh, meron tayong specific na plano. Kasi kung ano applicable, for example, sa COVID, pwedeng hindi naman siya applicable kung may earthquake. Ayun. Sa tingin ko, kailangan natin i-customize. Baka si Sir Ben, you have uh, insights din. Uh, dapat ito magkaibang strategy for rapid and slow onset disasters. Uh, I 
ayo dito si Mante Barrio ng Level of Impact kasi ito so sa sa ah nandiyan na kasi lagi lagi nandiyan so yung yung mga slow on sa usually career related yung ah si Level Guys ang tingin nila dyan yung trivial trivial so yeah you really have to kasi sa mga sa mga observe ng community ah sample of two stories two stories lagi na babasa they have that ah na nakaprocess din sa information na binibigyan natin. Pero kapag let's say ang Johnny Swiss or Benji at saka sa C-level guys, hindi yung minsan ako ng naked eye, hindi na experience. Kailangan uh, i-build siya ng ng ayaw. So, uh, yeah. Kailangan iba yung kailangan information, let's say uh, support study ba yung kailangan or uh, Uh, okay, thank you po sir. I think it all boils down din po no, sa uh, assessing kung ano ba yung current risk perception nila, whatever kind of disaster yon, And then, imamatch yung perception nila sa kung ano yung actual, di ba, na, na, na hinaharap nila na risk. No? Okay. So um, last na question na po siguro since 4.50 na. Ano daw po, uh, also one of our research is from CLRG. What can you say about the existing quarantine quali- classification system daw? And the fact that we get confused with the differences of these four, like ECQ, MECQ, GCQ, and GCQ. How do you think can we improve on this given na yan ang na-introduce na classification? Siguro, um, since ito na po yung last question natin, Um, each of our speakers would like to could uh, give this response. Um, yes, Maki. Uh, particularly during the uh, DCT, DCT, sa toto lang nakakalito talaga sa. <laughs> If you don't, uh, yung natutukan yung local data mo on the city level scale, may alhamid kung ano na ba? Kasi muna, hindi ka rin lumalabas eh. Hindi mo nakikita yung saling gas sa lapas na pwede ka lang dahil na kalsada, ilan na lang dahil bukas na na tigdaan. So, uh, sa, sa pag-complicate ng, ng uh, this quarantine level, ay hindi na kailangan nila dyan kung susunod palagi. Uh, ano pa yung plan mo? Kasi pag, kahit anong GCQ yan, kahit anong quarantine yan, yan, yan ang perception natin lahat dyan, mag-stay, mag, mag-tigil ka sa lugar mo. Pero kailangan yan, uh, ini-extend yung, uh, yung yung restriction mo dun sa ano ba yung plano. Para naunawaan din na for, uh, 50% ang isang karanan din na, na 50% lang yung capacity ng, ng mga uh, ng mga businesses. Ano nang nangyayari doon sa parang 50% na equivalent doon sa workers na hindi nagkatabaho? Maka ganun din yung itagdag doon sa hindi lang sa basta ito communicate na oh, you have to reduce your capacity. Pero kailangan agad-agad ng local government na rin sa even the national government. Ano yung nagawin mo doon sa 50% na nag-displaced ng workers during sa panahon ng uh, particular uh, quarantine period? Thank you po. Uh, Ms. Karen, siguro, um, what can you say about the current quarantine quality classification system na masyado daw confusing? Ano, ayun, sobrang confusing siya talaga. Kahit ako, minsan, pag, ano, pag on the spot na mag-explain, hindi ko na siya, hindi ko na siya ma-differentiate, no? Barbecue na lang. <laughs> barbecue na lang yung alam ko. Puro sila, ano, GCQ, MECQ. Pero yun, uh, nasabi na din ni Ben kasi yung gusto ko sana, aside from dun sa Since andiyan na yan, yung mga nakalito na ilang acronyms, sana malinaw din, no, uh, ano ba yung plano talaga kapag ganun yung level na yung, ano, yung, yung quarantine dun sa certain LGV. Kasi, ano ba, nakalito pa talaga yung definition nila. Sa so, totoo lang, hindi ko na lang paano i-address yung sa national level. Siguro sa part ng LGU, improve na lang din natin, no, ko yung messaging natin with our constituents. Kasi, ano, paano ba? Teka lang. 
Siguro Sir Edwin muna na. <laughs> Dahil kung gusto sabihin baka ano, baka makota ko eh. Sige po, babalik tayo mamaya kay Miss Karen. Maybe Sir Irwin. Sa, sa akin ang problema, problema ko with the quarantine system and in many of the things that they did is they keep using it from week to week. Such that ang hirap ma, maalala. So within each, ano, may bago na naman, whether it's the classification of uh, recoveries versus Uh, ano ba, press recovery, <laughs> tapos ngayon, you know. basta everything, parang hindi siya consistent. Kasi parang gusto mo, para matuto yung mga tao, consistent siya. And kinukumpare ko nga lang with other acronyms in other places, like uh, track, trace, and treat. Madali lang natandaan. Or the three C's sa, na avoid, di na to, avoid crowded places, avoid closed spaces, yung ganun. So, yung mga ganun messaging na simple, If, if if the messaging lang could be simple and ma- madaling maalala, then the communication would be better. Versus a system where parang from week to week nag-iba yung classification, mas mahirap matutunan ng mga tao. I think that's, that's the thing that I... In other words, hindi ko gusto yung sistema natin na papalit-palit na marami kang kailangang tandaan. Um, Sir Flores. Um, generally, sabi nga nila, Ah, nakakalito. Nakakalito din nakakalito yung ano, yung mga acquired issuances. Um, technically, uh, generally dito sa amin kasi, um, like in the case of uh, Iloilo, uh, it, it was the national government na nag-declare ng ECQ sa NCR. However, dito sa Iloilo City, even though hindi pa siya na-declare na ECQ, it was the city mayor of Iloilo City na nag-declare based on sa mga uh, advices coming from the academe coming from the health sector and another stakeholders. So may 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 meron silang simulation modeling na ano yung possible scenario given na ganito yung current situation sa si city bago siya nag-declare. So noon nung time na yun medyo clear yun sa tao na ano yung basis bakit ganun yung declaration ganito yung protocol. Pero nung national government na yung nag-decide on what particular category dun sa quarantine issuances yung bibigay sa sa other local governments doon na nagkakaalito dito kasi hindi natin nalalaman na bakit dineclare siya na ECQ bakit dineclare siya na modified ECQ GCQ modified GCQ wherein kung titingnan natin yung data bakit yung iba konti lang yung case ECQ yung iba marami GCQ parang doon siya nagkakaalito ano ba yung basis natin bakit ba natin siya tinawag na ECQ kung yung counterpart na kino-compare mo na LGU ay hindi naman ganoon ang ang situation. Tapos bakit mo sin true to all yung yung ini-impose na, na na protocol na iba naman yung parang konti lang yung differences doon sa sa ECQ and uh, and ECQ and the rest. So hindi mo talaga alam paano ba ako mag mag-act? Ano yung activity ko as a person? Paano ko i-protect yung self ko? So doon tayo nagkaka ito dito. Siguro sa, sa part ng government is a, ano yung distinction doon sa mga issuances na to? Bakit tinawag natin silang ganito, ganito yung protocols? Uh, ano bang pagkakaiba-iba nito sa, pra- sa practice? Ano ba yung dapat gawin ng tao pag ganito? Sa, sa, sa atin, na, nalilito tayo eh, na, na ECQ tayo pero parang yung behavior natin hindi dapat mag-change. GCQ tayo pero parang ECQ pa rin yung behavior na kinukumpel ng government. So doon nagkakalito-lito. Siguro dapat paro yung, yung pag-categorize ng ng, ng ng classification, pag-categorize ng what would be the behavior. Uh, at dapat may, may equivalent na risk. Ano yung gano'n ka, ka-risky pag tinawag mo na ECQ, pag MECQ, pag GCQ, and whatsoever Q. Sabi nga ni Miss Karen, barbecue. Barbecue na lang eh. Kasi parang hindi, hindi, hindi na natin naintindihan ano ba dapat ang gagawin ko. Hindi siya talaga klaro. Siguro yun yung mga dapat consideration natin in issuing categories, ano 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 yung yung behavior na nire-require nito ano yung risk na na na, na, da, na hinaharap ng mga tao pag ganito yung classification. Maraming salamat Dr. Flores. Miss Karen, uh... oo, i-add ko lang no, sa kanina. Yun nga, since nakakalito na siya talaga, uh, i-improve na lang siguro ng LGU. Na mention ko kanina yung sa ano, paggamit ng analogies. Kasi halimbawa, ECQ o ano yon, MECQ. Kasi sa yun nga, sa human brain, parang alam natin, uh, sinabi mo yung term, pero magtatanong yung utak natin, uh, what is it like? Parang ganun. Kung bago sa storm surge, 
ano ba yung katulad niya pag ano i-visualize ko kasi yun kung puro acronyms tayo tapos hindi malino yung definition grabe talaga yung anxiety sa community tapos experience ko sa pasig ano ba before pa ni River Test sa MCQ ano mag, nag-local lockdown pero pinaliwanag doon sa affected na barangays kung bakit at ano yung kailangan nilang gawin tapos right after pinadalhan sila ng ano ng food packs para hindi na sila lalabas tapos may ano din, may explanation na bakit kailang, na hindi sila pwedeng lumabas. Kasi tumaas na yung cases dun sa barangay nila mismo. So yun, kailangan lang din ng, ano, ng explanation and reassurance yun. Para sa akin yung analogies din, para ma-visualize nung, ano, nung mga tao. Ano ba yung MECQ, GCQ, gano'n. Maraming salamat, uh, Ms. Karen. Uh, I think gusto kong bumalik kanina sa sinabi rin ni Sir Irwin yung about repackaging information, no? I think sa, sa LGU level, sa local level, what they can do is, since sa national level na yung nagsiset ng classification, what, can do, what they can do sa part nila is to repackage yung information in a way na mas naintindihan ng constituents nila. Uh, so, I think, um, yung kunari, how the people can, how the edges can assess siguro yung um, level of understanding ng tao sa mga ganun is pwede nilang gawin yung strategy na ginawa namin ni Dr. Flores on um, gathering data, nag-gather kami ng data on yung risk perception or crisis perception ng mga tao. In that way, mas ma-focus siguro yung um, communication messages uh, para mas maintindihan nila. Part kasi ng communication messages din po yun. Yung, uh, yung maintindihan nila yung iba-ibang quarantine classification system. Ayan. So maraming salamat po. Uh, now we can proceed to um, uh, yung closing and final reminders po. Uh, again, yung mga hindi po natin nasagot na questions ay uh, email na lang yung forward na lang po namin yon sa ating resource speakers and then um, sila na po magre-respond sa inyo via email. So uh, para po sa ating uh, closing remarks, I would like to um, ask our direct director Professor uh, Ali Celestino. Um, dito pa po ba si Ma'am Alice? I'm here. Hi, ano ma'am? Hello po. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Maki. So it's 5.01 in the afternoon. We've managed our time very well. We have a very productive uh, webinar. I, I'm not a communications expert, but I really enjoyed this webinar with you guys. So on behalf of the CLRG team and the National College of Public Administration, let me express our appreciation and gratitude to the participants from all over the country for taking time and interest in joining us this afternoon in this virtual discussion of a very important topic on effective risk crisis communication in times of pandemic. I hope that um, you have learned and therefore appreciated the value of communicating effectively with the people, the risk of a health disaster and other disasters for that matter. It really matters a lot that the government at the national and local levels should have an effective communication plan, especially in times of crisis, so that people will be properly guided how to protect themselves, how they can help the government respond to the crisis, among others. And also thank you to our guest discussants, namely to Professor uh, Raymond Flores of the West Visayas State University. Thank you, Professor uh, Flore Flores, for unselfishly sharing with us the findings of your baseline survey. It was indeed very informative for us all. I am sure that we can all relate to your findings based on our experience. And uh, thank you for the tips that you gave on improving risk crisis communication at the local level. So LGUs, local government officials, uh, take note of the tips that Professor uh, Flores has given us. And of course, to our very own Dr. Erwin Alampay, Professor of the National College of Public Administration, for um, expanding our knowledge on the use of ICP as a tool for effective risk crisis communication. We learned many things like uh, in communication, the sender should carefully consider his her message or information. Is the message, is the information clear or klaro lang sa atin na nagsisend? Is it understandable to the receiver of the message? Napaka-importante po ng mga bagay na ito to make the communications more effective. 
Another thing is that the sender of the message should also consider yung different means or technology of transmitting the message. Kasi hindi lang, hindi laman lahat po ng tao ay may access sa lahat ng types of uh, technology or media. And of course, maraming salamat din to Ms. Karen Lapitan uh, for raising the level of our awareness concerning effective risk uh, communication practices by giving real life uh, examples and for giving a summary of the good practices of the LGUs that could be replicated by the other LGUs out there. And siyempre kay uh, Mr. Ben Aguijon for and enriching our learning experience from this webinar and for reminding us about the broader context of uh, risk or crisis communication. We hope that uh, we will continue collaborating with you on a similar topic or maybe related topics in the coming weeks or months. We do not know when this pan pandemic will end, so there is really a continuing need to communicate and learn from each other. To the CLRG team, a million thanks for your hard work, Maki and his team. I would like to give you this honor since you are the ones who made this fruitful webinar uh, reality. And let us continue with our endeavor to be an avenue of learning for our stakeholders in spite of the difficulties we are experiencing because of this COVID-19 pandemic. We hope to see you virtually again soon and thank you again to everyone. God bless us all. Maraming salamat po, Ma'am Alice. Uh, napakagandang closing remarks. Um, okay, so ilang final re uh, reminders na lang po, no? So yung uh, present po kanina ni Dr. Flores na research namin on uh, risk crisis communication, yung policy brief na yun ay available sa aming website. Pwede nyo iscan yung QR code. Huwag kayo mag-alala, hindi yan pupunta sa kanta ni Adele na QR code. <laughs> okay. Tapos, uh, pwede nyo rin uh, gamitin yung link. Um, pero you can also message us if uh, hindi nyo mahanap yung policy briefs. So nakasummarize na po sa brief na yan yung findings na prinsent kanina ni Dr. Flores. And also, um, I would like to inform everyone as well that the fifth volume of our book of readings is now available. So the book contains research from UPNC faculty, public administration experts, and local practitioners. Research topics include a review of the local government code, emerging issues and decentralization, and case studies on good local governance. So this is how you can grab a copy. So you must fill out the order form. You can go to the order form, again, through the QR code. Um, and yung link rin po na nakalagay sa screen. Um, and then send payment ni po sa, uh, sa bank account na nakalagay din po screen. And then send a proof of payment to CLRG si Book of Readings at gmail.com. Uh, Those who, who wants to order a copy, uh, you may express your interest in the chat box and our webinar support team then can assist you. You may also send us a message on Facebook or email if you want a copy. Um, and then, uh, promote ko na lang din po on uh, August 25, Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. We will have a webinar talk show on evidence-based decision-making and community-based public health response to COVID-19 and beyond. Unfortunately, uh, tapos na po yung registration. So if you weren't able to register, pwede pa rin po kayong sumali via live stream. The link will be posted on the webinar day. Okay, so final reminders lang po about yung certificate and copies of the presentations. So para po sa ating Zoom attendees, um, yung mga makakuha po ng certificate and copy ng presentations are those are only those na, na um, at least a total of 70% of the total duration of the webinar uh, and yung mag-accomplish po ng feedback form. Para po sa live stream attendees natin, um, dapat po if, if you tune in via the CLRG website, you should have a uh, filled in the attendance sheet. And para naman po dun sa gumamit ng YouTube live stream, dapat po tinipe natin yung, uh, yung pangalan and email addresses. After the, this webinar, um, email namin po kayo for verification lang. Again, you will need to uh, answer a set of questions about the discussions. Uh, just para lang verify namin if, uh, if you really uh, uh, joined us in the webinar. And also, you have to accomplish the feedback form. Uh, please expect the feedback, uh, please expect the e-certificates and copies of the presentations between August 26 to 28. And ito po yung link and QR code para sa ating feedback form. 
So I'll give you uh, I'll give you three minutes to save the link or if you want to fill them out now. Uh, it's open, but it's open until August 19, Wednesday next week. Um, well, nakikita ko sa, uh, sa chat box, wala na po tayong attendance sheet dito sa Zoom. Um, yung attendance sheet po uh, dito, uh, ibibase namin sa Zoom, uh, sa report na i-generate ng Zoom. And magsisend po kami ng copies ng presentations. Okay, para po sa mga nandito pa, mag-final picture taking lang po tayo before we end. So, um, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so maraming salamat po sa lahat ng umaten. Uh, please follow our website and social media pages if you want to receive updates about our upcoming webinars and other activities. So again, maraming salamat po and see you again on the 25th and always stay safe.